audio is up on the TV. All right. Should be live now. Yeah? Jean wants to put in her two cents. She has something to say. Do you like that design? You like it? Yeah. It's a sp spool roller. Yeah? I don't think so. I don't think Jean likes it. Welcome to stream, folks. We are working on the Prusa enclosure again. Um, there's not a lot of space on the table for Jean right now, so she... Whatever. <laughs> She's the star of the show anyway. I uh, saw somebody's going to work on a cheaty fork uh, to get vanilla clipper running on it. Awesome. Maddie, hello. Millennium Machine is in the house. Welcome. Adam, hi. I saw Carrie's here. We got Tor here. Truck guy. Hobo Banana. Jeff, welcome, folks. You don't need to keep showing your butt to everybody, Bean. Gene Bean, say hi. There's not a lot of room up here for you right now as we work on this enclosure, so... Unimpressed, yeah. She's she's hard to impress. Rather hard to impress. SRT Devin, welcome. Yeah? What? What? She's staring into my soul. All right, then. Uh, go lay on the couch, kiddo. All right. <laughs> she gets her cat hair on everything. Let's get to work on the enclosure. Last stream, we got the primary enclosure assembly together. Since the last stream, I designed, uh, for which Prusa did you make the enclosure? It's going in my, uh, the Prusa Mark IV is going in here. Peter, welcome. You have a soul. No, I don't. So thank you for calling me out with that. I lost mine years ago. I'm half ginger and I married a ginger. So uh, souls don't exist in our household. Um, my beard grows in red. My hair was brown, but anyway. Um, I designed up this uh, three kilogram spool roller setup for the top of the machine because I needed somewhere to put a three kilogram spool on this machine, on this setup for the big project I'm going to be running on this. And it also fits, let me switch cameras, Boop. it also fits single kilogram spools just fine and yeah. Got the hexes on the side of it. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video or this stream for the files to download for this. Uh, what's your big project? You are not allowed to know yet. Uh, it'll be the next Mandic, not not the next Mandic really video, but the video after that will be the project that this is going to get used for. The current lore is the folks at Prusa. Um, challenged me to make something big using the Mark IV to show that, like, you don't need a big machine to make big stuff. It's kind of the concept, so I can't say much more than that without getting uh, too far into it, so that's a nice-looking table. Yeah. All right. I got to look at the instructions and remember where the heck we were at when we left off last stream. I believe we were starting on the doors or the panels last time. Uh, pull up the OBSBOT stuff here, see if I can get that working. For some reason I can't get the OBSBOT controls to connect to the computer, but I can. Is it a human-sized Joseph Prusa statue? Um, no, it isn't, but that's a fun idea. That wouldn't be creepy in the least. Let me get back to the where I was in the instructions, I think. All right, so here we are. Assembling hinges. White screen incoming. Boop. Assembling hinges. Would be nice if someone made a machine that could be used to make, fabricate metal enclosures with. Oh, well. If only, right? If only somebody did that. Well, maybe someday someone will come up with such a magical, wonderful concept. Maybe. My tea is too hot right now. I had the water. The kettle was screaming when I made that. Morning all! Welcome, MonGen73! So, uh, I don't think I've made... 
I don't remember. I know I've made the announcement on stream. I'm going to expand this a little bit. I know I've made the announcement on stream before, but we have Millennium Machine in the house. Might as well say I will be building a Milo 1.5 after Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. I've committed. Uh, LDO is sponsoring my trip to to uh, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Thank you to them. Makers of fine 3D printer kits and the Milo 1.5 kit. Um, CNC milling setup. They are going to be sending me one of those kits after Rocky Mountain, and we will be building one on stream. And I think uh, I I kind of threw the idea, like I surprised him with it, but I threw the idea at Daniel Modbot about doing at least one or two joint streams on the process, because he um, because he is going to be building one as well. So, uh, what's the best slicer for the Ender V three uh, Ender three V three that isn't Creality Print? Somebody chimed in with Orca slicer. That's the slicer I use almost exclusively these days, and it's what I would use. It will require you to root the Ender three V three to send files from Orca slicer to the machine, but you can slice an Orca slicer, export the G code, and then upload the G code through Creality Print. It's annoying, but it's totally doable. Okay, so we are assembling hinges now. I gotta find the printed parts for this. I think they are in here. What are you doing? She, she wants to be up higher, so she's looking to jump up on... Uh, I use Super Slicer and Orca Slicer inter interchangeably. Both are great. I... I, has Super Slicer been updated in the last two years? There's so many great features that have come into 3D printing since Super Slicer last got updated that I I just couldn't possibly touch it at this point. I was never much of a fan of it to begin with personally, but... Um, okay, so there's a filament spool holder in here. Filament guide. This has the hinges. I can take the spool off of here. Surprisingly, Super Slicer Dev is working on it again. Cool. I, it was just always too much for me. I didn't find the need for the features it had, personally. He took, quit his job to work on it full-time. That's sick. I'll have to take a look at it again. Oh, this did come with the handles. Damn it, I didn't think it came with the handles. I'm printing them on my, two, on my 0 0.1 right now. Oh, well. The handles are printing on my 0 0.1, but... I didn't need to. Uh, let's see if we can get the Obsbot angle working. For some reason the Obsbot software just won't connect to my um, computer, but it will to my phone. So I can control the angles and everything through that. It, The camera is working. Like it, If I switch to it right now, it's working just fine. I gotta reach out to them. It's probably a software update issue or something. Uh, I mean, actually, as I open this, that it's giving me a statement saying you need to update. So that's quite possibly the reason or a reason. All right. So we've got hinge parts. And second hinge part. So E1 and E2, it looks like. Maker Viking in the house. Welcome. Mo Moji 3D. Welcome. Yeah, enclosing a bed slinger really does take up a lot of space just because you need to account for the space of the bed. You know, slinging back and forth. It's an unfortunate fact of life with a bed slinger. Okay. Um, assemble the hinges. So this goes... Oh, okay. I see how this is. Yeah, this gets roll pins for the hinges. Core XY advantages on that. It is an advantage of Core XY. You get the, uh, your, your, your constraint is just the frame, pretty much. So, wrong scene. Okay, so there's a handful of roll pins that go in for the, ah, I had these open already, um, for the, uh, switch to this camera, Boop. the hinges. So, I've got this little hinge piece second hinge piece and then a roll pin presses in oh that's a great fit that is a really good fit that's an excellent design 
I was able to push that in by hand, but it feels so secure. I'm not worried about it at all falling out. They nailed that design. This one's a little tighter, but not bad. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I have one bed slinger. It's the only uh, printer in my house that isn't enclosed. Understandable. Uh, I've got a handful of bed slingers and they all are unenclosed at the moment. That's why we're getting the Mark IV into an enclosure because I want to use it more and I want to print ASA with it. So. Secondary use of a pair of uh, flush cuts to push things. I'm here just for cat. For the cat cats. She's on my desk right now. In fact, let me... Uh, she's behind the camera right now. Let me get a view of her. She's, She doesn't normally hang out on my desk, but she is right now. She's just staring at, at I don't know what on my desk. Jean, what are you doing? Jean. Bean, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Silly. Silly cat. Flush cutters are great for hangnails. All right. Like the large spool holder, three kilogram. Yes, it is the three kilogram spool holder. I designed it up, released it on Fangs and Printables yesterday. It is a roller bearing design. Three kilogram spool holder. Yep, yep, yep. I also, if anybody cares for whatever reason, um, I also modeled up this three kilogram spool of filament because I wanted the 3D model to base my measurements off of when designing the roller and I just didn't have, um, I couldn't find one. So I designed one. And now there's a 3D model of the spool out there. If you wanna make a spool holder for a Polymaker three kilogram spool, the model exists, it's on my page now. On my Thangs page. The roller spool holder is both on my Thangs page and my printables page. Since it was designed for the Prusa enclosure, it could be used on anything. I designed it for the Prusa enclosure, but because it was designed for the Prusa enclosure, I did put the design on printables as well. I have one Mega S and I'm wondering if, if to keep it and use it as slower stuff like flexibles, such materials, or sell it to put in new stuff. Ah. Almost certain, uh, almost sure, uh, Zero G, welcome. Um, almost sure you can stand on the thing when it's done. It's super sturdy. It is so sturdy it's amazing i mean as a metal fabricator i'm not shocked by it but it's amazing how strong sheet metal can become with just you know press break bent corners and stuff it's all it, it creates a structure is just these different bend radiuses radii holding things into shape and bolting it together and it just it's strong absolutely uh, i wouldn't want to stand in the middle of it but the overall structure absolutely could support my weight, I'm sure. Okay, uh, how many of these hinges need to go together? Well, I would imagine four. Yeah, four. Do you have refractive earphones or do you... I have holes in my ears. I have holes in my ears. I do have holes in my ears. Jean, what are you doing? She's sitting there staring at my V0 running on my on my desk. Printing a part it no longer needs to be printing because I thought, I didn't think this came with the, uh, don't we all have holes in your, our ears? We do, you're right. I have extra. I have extra ones. You see some RGB light through my ear. Um, she's, she's, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. I want to adjust the exposure on the OBSBOT real quick. Uh, yeah, it's it's way dark right now. Uh, manual, auto, no. I want it manual. Shutter, no. ISO. Yeah, okay. 
Wow, it is amazing how one stop of ISO made a huge difference. <laughs> she's being a creep. She never, ever does this. It's hard to tell, but she's sitting there, like, staring at my desk and was just staring at the V0. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. She's just being weird. She's got her taste of fame from being on camera, and now she's just all about it. Do you like that they chamfered the edges versus straight 90s? Totally agree. This chamfered edge looks so much better. Got the plus package on your holes, yeah. I thought she monitored chats for comment about her. I think she's falling asleep sitting up right now. She's... She's kind of like sitting there squinty-eyed, just kind of looks like she's staring at stuff, but I think she's just falling asleep. <laughs> she knows the comments are about her. She doesn't need to... She doesn't need to monitor chat. She knows they're about her. She can sense it. Do I ever use the, the holes for cable management for wired earplug... Or ear headphones? Nope. I don't use wired headphones anymore. If I do, they're over-ear ones, studio monitors for editing audio. Wow, this one's a much tighter fit. Uh, and if they, if I don't, then they're my AirPods or, or other in-ears. So, no. Wireless. One of these has to be tough. There we go. The best hammer that ever did exist. All right. There's our hinges smooth moving hinges Biney, hello welcome she's supervising obviously absolutely she is supervising you're right okay back to the instructions now mount the hinges i can do that all right Mount the hinges to the face, use the same procedure. M3 by eight screws. Error, what am I saying here? I know where the front is. M3 by eight screws. Okay. I think you're supposed to put in some, yeah, you gotta put in some M3 nuts into the prints as well. I missed that step. Okay, we can do that. Uh, I'm gonna put this up, the desk up a little bit. Maybe we can get a view to the front side of this. The front's over there. So I can assemble this and you folks can see. Cat Vault Overseer. Who's excited about the, the Fallout show? I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Uh, I forget the name of the lead actress, but she's, I've enjoyed her in things. I always love the dude who's playing the, uh, Trevor, welcome! Uh, I've always enjoyed the dude who's playing the um, ghoul. I forget his name as well. Hope it's good. Yeah, I hope so. I'm just waiting for a damn new game. I don't want to play Fallout 76. I like single player games. I don't like online games. So I'm really waiting for the next in the series. Fallout, you know, 5 or whatever. <laughs> I'll put in these hex nuts before I move on and actually get this stuff mounted. Walter Goggins, that's it. Walter Goggins, that's it. Have you ever seen Walter Goggins' father? He like talked about him on a on a on a sketch or a, not sketch a one of those late night shows. Um, his father's a character like a an old school fucking over the top kind of Texan dude wearing a cowboy hat and boots and whatever. But yeah, Walter Goggins, that's him. I enjoy him. So, inexpensive prints. You saw the spool holder on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you. For anybody who is not familiar, I do post things like that on Instagram and Twitter when they get released. So, 
Fallout has great lore to be explored in a show. Totally. There's so much lore. I don't know if you ever followed... Uh, there's a YouTube channel. It's all about, like, was all about um, Fallout lore. Uh, all about Fallout lore was a... Uh, what's his... What's he go by? Dang it. He, he would tell stories of the Fallout lore and explore the game and, like, piece together the stories for you. Like, all the little snippets you might find on a computer here or a, a here, a radio message there or whatever. He would piece those all together into, like, one narrative so you could learn the story that might be hard or easy to miss uh, otherwise. Um, dang it. I haven't watched him in forever because he kind of ran out of Fallout lore since there hasn't been a new game in forever. So he started doing a lot more game streaming and such, and I haven't I haven't kept up. Jay's Two Cents tried boron nitrite as a thermal paste for a PC. When did he try that? I haven't seen that yet. I, I thought I was fairly caught up. I'm optimistic after The Last of Us show. Yeah, I really... Last of Us was, was great, so... There's some hope there. Just out. Oh, okay. I would imagine it didn't go well. I, I don't think the thermal properties of boron nitride are, are like the highest. It's just the temperature handling capability. Been replaying the Assassin's Creed games. I kind of fell out of the Assassin's Creed games. The last one I really, really liked was, uh, I loved, um... Ugh, dang it. Black Flag, or Black... Was it Black Flag? Black Sail? The pirate one. With uh, Kenway. Edward Kenway or whatever. I really enjoyed that one. It did not work. It was not thick enough. Huh. Alright. I guess I only really use it in applications that, you know, are... Uh, kind of tight tolerances, so... I would... I would think that would be a tight enough tolerance, but who knows. A few more nuts to put in here. Ah, oh, it's going to bother me. I'm going to look. Oxhorn. Oxhorn. That's who it is. The YouTuber I'm thinking of is Oxhorn. Uh, O-X-H-O-R-N. Um, Oxhorn was... If you have never heard of him, he has an excellent speaking voice. Does a great job narratively putting together game footage and... The lore of uh, of the Fallout games, excellent. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. I used to like listen to them on my drive to work when I had a really long drive to work and such, and just listen to the stories, and uh, it was great. Loved it. Um, Black Flag is my favorite. Yeah, I I think I agree with that. The I mean the the ship like the ship battles and and upgrading your ship and traveling the sea was like the most interesting part of that game. Um, I've never tried to play, like, uh, what's the Sea of Thieves or whatever since. I've heard good things about that. I've heard people say if you liked that part of that game, you'd like, you'd like that, but. But I'd, uh, I never have. I never played it. Alright, a couple of these don't seat in here quite as nice as the rest. That's not, don't need inserts. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a part here. I've got two of these, whatever they are. I feel like there should be a third one, but I don't see it. Oh. Assassin's Creed Unity. I don't think I ever played that one. I don't think I ever played that one. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing the part. All right. Now let's see about getting this other camera angle going here. Pre, uh, please repeat the channel name. It is Oxhorn. O-X-H-O-R-N. Good morning from Australia. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, let me find my mouse here real quick. Yeah. Pull it up. Pull them up real quick. Uh, Oxhorn. So, like I said, he's been doing a lot more streaming lately because he kind of ran out of stuff to talk about in the game. But he's got, like, videos. Like, 15 minutes talking about the one kid, like the... A kid you find a kid ghoul you find in a, a fridge. He just does a really good job of telling stories behind the stuff in Fallout, the lore and whatever. Um, he goes Fallout one, two. Uh, he 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 covers a lot of stuff. So 
Yeah. Always enjoyed that. Okay. Back to the instructions here. AC Odyssey was the first one you really got into. Uh, what's that? That's one of the more recent ones, isn't it? I don't have... Part of it is I don't have any of the newer consoles. I just don't bother anymore. I don't have enough time for gaming to bother with consoles. You know, I can use my work computer to play games, so I'll play PC games. And I have a Switch just for on-the-go stuff, but... I just don't bother much anymore. Table going up. Ah. Gotta grab a microphone. His channel's top results for your for lore show. There you go. All right. I'm gonna change the other camera angle. I'm gonna adjust that camera real quick. All right, all right. We got to get the hinges on here with some M3x8s. I just, I just don't have enough time to play. I would love to play games more. I just don't... If I have time to be playing a game, I have time to be working on a project, and I love what I do, so here we are. That's the flaw of uh, my business is I always... Ha, I can always make time for work, and I do. A lot. Look at the instructions again. Uh, okay. These go this away. Okay. Okay. So these go here. There's my screwdriver. I took the thumbnail with it. When work is fun, you, uh, something you enjoy, is it really work, though? I mean, it's still really work. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I do love what I do, and I wouldn't really have it any other way, so. I use my GPU more for CAD than for gaming. Yes, agreed. So do I. By a long shot. By a long shot. I uh, got some new parts printing on my bamboo right now uh, that I designed this morning. Uh, exactly the same way. You start playing a game, you feel guilty, and then bored and start building or designing again. Yep. Yep, I'm right there with you. Honestly, that's what I do most of the time to relax these days is design. If I have time, downtime, where I don't need to be working on a, a printer build or a project for Mandic Really, um, I work on design work in CAD. I jump into Fusion and I start designing parts for upcoming projects and things that I want to get out there and whatever, so... Uh, any advice on a first install with CR, with convert your CR10 to Clipper? Just look for the configs for your machine. And um, there's plenty of really good guides, walkthroughs about setting up Clipper for the first time. Pretty sure like Daniel, Modbot's done one or two. Um, there's also always the uh, Creality Speeder Pad. Uh, Creality Speeder Pad um, is... Honestly, pretty solid for converting a Creality machine, you know? They've got configs built in and auto calibration kind of setups and stuff. Um, always been a, been a console as a Mac user. However, Mac gaming is better than it used to be. Totally. Um, switch wire conversion. A CR10 switch wire? Oh, yeah, it's doable, isn't it? Um, my issue is what to design. I love doing it, but... It but hard to keep ideas flowing. Uh, I mean, I definitely run out of ideas like can cup stuff. I hate, I, I dislike the fact, but I've totally run a, I've run out of a lot of ideas there. When you say config for the machine, is it uh, the main board or is it the machine itself? It is the machine itself. Um, it's a little hard to explain. Have you ever compiled Marlin firmware? for uh, a printer. Have you ever done that? Let's start there. Um, because configuration on Clipper 
is similar to setting up Marlin firmware for compiling, but without the compiling. A switch wire conversion where you use a, a Nintendo Switch instead of a Raspberry Pi. No, but compiled ver, uh, firmware for the five inch X touch. Um, okay, well then, you probably have all the compile experience you need for Clipper. That's that's not a problem. Configuration. The configuration is what tells the firmware what pins on your board to look for. Like this is the X switch, like X limit switch. This is the Y limit switch. It doesn't know without that stuff. There are default configs for various machines out there. Um, I don't miss compiling Clip uh, Marlin either. No, I don't either. Um, there are various configs out there. Um, that's where I say, like, that's something that the Creality uh, Sonic Pad... Is it the Sonic Pad? Speeder Pad? I forget which. Is it a Sonic Pad or Speeder Pad? Speeder Pad is FL Sun. Um, I have one here somewhere. I don't use it. I should freaking... should send it to you. Um... Gonna have to compile it for my CR10. It's a Frankenstein running a 4.2.7. Honestly, that's not a huge deal, um, but that would create a problem with the Sonic Pad, unfortunately. Well, it probably would create a problem with the Sonic Pad. You do have to compile the firmware for the board. Um, you do have to compile the firmware for the board. It's not a big deal to do, but you just have to know the right configuration for whatever processor you're running. Compiling Clipper the easy way, use RadOS. I haven't played with RadOS yet. I really want to build a rat rig and or... I mean, I know I could just play with RadOS. Uh, ah! Dropped a screw. Um, oh, okay. All of those are in. I'm looking for more screws. They're, they're all in. Okay. Next... They're all in. Now it's for the back time for the back panel. Back panel, nylon rivets. Hinges are on the other side already. Assembling the back panel. Oh, the back panel goes in from the inside and the rivets go from the outside. Okay. I'm gonna clean up the desk just a little bit here. Kiao is nice uh, if you're new to Clipper. I use Kiao almost, I use Kiao a lot for setting up Clipper still, because why not? Um, Want to get a little more speed out of your old machine? I mean, it'll help. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's going to unlock potential or whatever. Somebody joked, oh, that's something I wanted to say. Somebody joked earlier about setting up, uh, I'm out of camera view. Uh, setting up um, a Nintendo Switch to run Clipper on. I had a project forever ago that I wanted to do, and it just never worked out. Um, I was I was really close to setting up Clipper on a pl uh, PlayStation Three. I was going to run a printer off of a printer or multiple printers off of a PlayStation Three just because I could. Because, you know, you can boot Linux on a PS3. Um, I've run Linux on a netbook before. I've run Clipper off of a netbook before. And I was going to do it with... Um, I was going to do it with PS3, but unfortunately, my PS3 that I still have, um, it, it has, like, the, uh, the yellow LED. Like, it just... It doesn't boot. It, it's messed up. Yeah, the whole solder issue they have with the chips and whatever. I bet a Steam Deck could run uh, Clipper easy. Sure, I'm sure it could. Isn't the clean desk uh, Jean's job by knocking stuff on the floor? No, that's Jekyll's job. <coughs> that's Jekyll's job. He just doesn't like to do it when I'm watching because he knows he's not supposed to. Jose, welcome! Uh, yeah, that's, that's his job. I caught him this morning doing that. I was sitting down eating my breakfast at my desk. Um... 
and uh, I was working on something and I hear a noise in the studio. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I, I turn around and Jekyll is knocking stuff off of my desk behind me. Off the, this bench that I'm working at right now. Demon, we call him a demon. I want to get the Commodore 64 mechanical keyboard 8-bit dough just released. 8-bit dough makes some great stuff. I've got a I've got an 8-bit dough controller that I got for uh, running emulation stuff on the Raspberry Pi and just never used it. Gravity testing, it's important. Yes, it is. <coughs> Another thing, I don't game. So then I you know, I set up a whole like uh, Raspberry Pi um, game emulator setup uh, and then I never used it, so I took the pie and ran a printer off of it because it was just kind of going to waste in there. Ah, oh, these panels are really thin. I'm so used to three millimeter panels from, from the Voron team. This is, this is tootie. It's like what, 1.5? Yeah, 1.5 mil. Clipper is a surprisingly light application or uh, uh, software. It is, it really is. I just set up RetroArch for the wife and I to play Mario Party. Rad. Clipper is light if you're not running on a K1 board. Yeah. Well, a lot of these companies, they spec things as light as they can because why pay for anything more? <laughs> the ceiling mic is just, a, just barely out of frame right here. The problem is the microphone arm that it's on is uh is too light duty so it'll like move and fall a little bit and it, it so it uh sometimes it creeps into the shot and i don't notice all right it is so the audio is picked up better the the goal is to have it just outside of frame so you don't see it uh which doesn't always work I have a better microphone arm for it, but I need to make a new mount for where it mounts to the desk. I just haven't gotten around to it. You'd be surprised how much proximity makes a difference on the sound coming out of a microphone, but it is not intended to be in the shot. So, okay, back panel going in. Now this goes in with rivets, plastic rivets. Works, I don't see anything wrong with it. Ah. So there's pre-cut openings for a couple of things here. I don't know what they're for. Uh, these rivets go from the outside in. Okay, just align the hole and stick a rivet in. Uh, why are you not lining up? Am I have this upside down, backwards, what? I'm not seeing holes. There it is. I just wasn't getting it quite right. Just wasn't getting it quite right. Boom. Push pin rivet. Easy. Push pin rivet and boom. It's like putting together car panels. Modern car panels. All right. Fill up all these holes so it won't be leaking so much air. That eh, one there doesn't get anything. How many are supposed to hold this in? Perceived the 13 remaining, so 14 total. Uh, use John's, uh, or Jan's, um, <coughs> his tension arm set up for a mic arm. That's a great idea, actually. That's such a beautiful design that he's created there. I'll have to hit him up about that. That's a, that's a good idea. I've got another mic arm. It's better quality than this one, but that's still way, way more fun. way more fun who knows who knows 
things are going to have to change at some point in the studio, but... Alright. Just a whole bunch of pins going in. Uh, I don't think that one aligns with anything, nor does that one. That one does. Uh, am I using a desk boom arm? No. Well, yes. Uh, it's a cheap one. Yeah, it's a it's a desk boom arm. I'll pull it into frame real quick. It's a desk boom arm with a wall mount bracket that's mounted to the 4040 extrusion at the corner of my desk. Um, and so the 4040 extrusion at the corner of the desk has a wall mount on it for a boom arm, desk boom arm to a shotgun microphone, professional mic setup. Uh, yeah, uh, Jan, if anybody hasn't seen already, um, John, Jan, uh, did I put that? Uh, I put one of these in the wrong spot. There's one of these, uh, these screws over here I put in the wrong spot holding the panel off. Yeah, he released a new video today after months of not releasing one on his like printer build that he's been doing using those parts. He Currently printing parts for my Mark III S to Mark IV conversion. Do you have any tips for the Mark IV? I don't, unfortunately. Mine came assembled. Antstar, welcome. Um, Came back to a surprise stream. Awesome. Welcome. Um, I don't really have any tips on the Mark IV yet. I haven't used the Mark IV a lot. Uh, I didn't build the Mark IV, so I don't really have a um, a good like breakdown of ideas for you. I just know that I've been really happy with the Mark IV compared to the Mark III S Plus, personally. I had a Mark III S Plus I really never personally liked, and the Mark IV I like a lot more. Uh, that's all I got. All I got right now. Have to head out. Thanks for stopping by Moji 3D. Appreciate it. Catch you in the next time. Remember seeing my video about it? Yeah. Yeah, I was never, I just, it, it never connected with me as a machine. Um. But instantly, the Mark IV has been so much better. Do you like Prusa Load Cell or Voron Tap more? I've never used Tap. Can't say. So far, I really like the Load Cell. Uh, first layers have been excellent. Not having to worry about first layer uh, Z offset has been great. Uh, any thoughts on getting an XL with the extra tool heads? I really, really want one. Uh, that's my thought. <laughs> I really want to play with multi-material. I really want to play mixing... Um, uh, mixing together different materials like TPU and PLA or ASA and you know <clears throat> uh, using PGG as a support interface material and such and I really want to play with that and I really want to play with a tool changer so I'd love to get an XL I had a pre-order for one and then when my pre-order came up I just I canceled it because I just couldn't justify the expense at the time I just didn't have the money um but hopefully I'll get to play with one at some point. Uh, two important questions. Three top takeout styles. Chinese, Mexican, etc. And second question, pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? I don't judge pineapple on pizza. Not for me. Um, it's not for me, but I don't judge it. Like, you do you. Uh, I don't like sweet and savory. I'm not a sweet and savory person. So, like, uh, sweet and sour sauce from, like, Chinese restaurants, not a fan. Um, error. Uh, takeout. Okay, takeout. Thai. Love Thai food. Indian. Uh, Thai, Indian. And I, those are two things that I feel like almost are better takeout. Because, like, they have more time to, like, meld the flavors in or something. You know, they have to stew. Longer Thai food and the longer Indian food cooks the better it gets. Um, Thai, Indian. 
I don't know, American pub food, American bar food can just be, when you're lazy and you just don't feel like cooking, you just want to watch a movie and just want to order like a fried chicken sandwich and some fries, it's kind of great. Some vocal spray, my throat's been acting up on me since I've been streaming so much. All right, that feels better already, though. Can you see these? Hello, welcome. All right, back to the instructions. We're on to the side panel now. Uh, assembling side panel is exactly the same as putting in the back panel. Simple. It's almost Haribo time. Not for me, but it's almost Haribo time. Okay, side panel's going in. I did print the handles for this thing, um, the side handles that go on this build. Boop. I printed them in black and orange ASA. Not exactly Prusa orange, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, whatever, it, it's, it's Polymakers ASA orange. It's not as bright and vibrant as the PETG from Prusa, but it works. So it'll work for these purposes. I'm also just not a pineapple fan. I'm just not a fan of pineapple personally. Should get some vegan gummy substitutes. Yeah, I should have ordered some. I knew I was doing this. I knew I was doing this build. I should have. I should have ordered some. Okano, howdy, welcome, welcome all. Um, I'm sure most of the folks in here already are, but I might as well mention it since I have to, want to keep mentioning. Uh, this is the Mandic Labs channel. Welcome to it. This is the second channel from Mandic, really, uh, mainly intended for streaming purposes and more tech-focused printer videos will be here in the future. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, please do. Um, please get subscribed, drop the stream a like. It really helps out getting this channel to help grow so I can focus a little more time here. And honestly, uh, it's kind of starting to look like I might have to focus more time here over Mandic really in Minato Distant Future. That's a whole discussion we're gonna have to have when we figure that out. <laughs> All right. Panel number two going in. Uh, I'm going to move this a little bit so I can get in there and film from the other angle. I don't know how I'm going to get the microphone to me while I'm in here. Maybe I'll like stick my head in. Just reminded me I haven't want to see more videos of mine on design um, like my video on car panel stuff uh, I do need to do more design stuff I it's um, yeah the the ROI on stream is uh, stream it's a double-edged sword um, like the AdSense money off of streams is definitely better than um, YouTube videos in general, but then a YouTube video that gets millions of views is gonna pay better because just more views. So like you kind of find a balancing act on that. And also sponsors don't really wanna sponsor streams generally, they'd rather sponsor a video. So it's a whole thing. Um, where was I headed? Uh, damn it, I wanted to look at something quick. I don't remember what I was doing. <laughs> I stopped putting in rivets for some reason. Let me look back at the chat. Maybe that'll jog my memory. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't 
don't remember where I was headed. Tom Gardner, you're not... Oh, that's what I wanted to do. You're not late. Welcome to it. Welcome to it. I wanted to make a Twitter post that we were live. I forgot. I forgot to do that. I forgot. I forgot. That's what I forgot. Copy. Live post. Okay. Brain fart moment. Hit the like button and 82 people watching and only um, uh, 30 likes now. So thank you very much, folks, and it is supported, uh, appreciated. Some creators have community that do a lot of supers on stream. Yeah, uh, folks, we started off strong on this channel with supers once I got monetized. Thank you so much for the support, folks. I don't expect it. Like, that's that's lovely. I really appreciate it, but eh. Um, it's, it's hard to explain. I am finding this really great to be able to... It's kind of forcing me to work on projects that I wouldn't have worked on otherwise. Because the problem for me is that while I'm working on... I mean, get back to putting these data together. Yeah. While I'm working on um, 3D printer builds, or while I'm working on videos for Mandic, really it's hard to make time for like a 3D printer build. So that's something that, it, it, they can be really time consuming and I can't afford the time all, while I'm making a video a lot of the time. So like these streams are a great way for me to get through projects that I'm backlogged on and haven't gotten to in a while. Like the Trident build and the, uh, the 0 0.2 uh, cookie CAD build. Those have both been waiting. This, this enclosure has been waiting for me for weeks and I just, I, I couldn't get to it. And so here we are. There's also like a little bit less prep involved, I guess. Millennium Machine Works coming in <laughs> with the super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. If, you. if anybody has been living under a rock and is not familiar with Millennium Machine Works, you should really check out the Milo 1.5, a 3D printable CNC. Well, not, not fully 3D printable, but uh, more of a, a milling type CNC machine i'm really excited to build one we will be building one here on stream in the not too distant future oh. if you haven't uh, already seen streams i know nero's done one steve uh steve builds did one just watched his this weekend when he got his running And LDO is selling kits for them now. So making it a lot easier for the community. Instead of having to source everything yourself. All right. I'm working like I'm working on a car, having to reach around, work blindly. I can kind of see, but I also can't. I'm gonna butcher your name, Jairo Mercado, uh, Hero Mercado. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I haven't seen you chatting before, so thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. LDO kits have a bit extra too. They usually do. They usually look for like really good community mods, and they add those in. Um, so yeah, that's that's a great thing, too. Like Nero, SOS, and my live streams. Thank you. I don't know that I've ever watched SOS's. Uh, I don't think I've really watched anything of SOS's. It's pronounced like Hyro. Okay. Hyro Mercado, thank you so much and welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I got the stereotypical German descendant American terrible pronunciation of everybody's names. Sorry. It's a trend now. We need more supers. Well. I mean, I'm going to selfishly say it is a trend. It should be a thing. <laughs> but I don't expect it. I appreciate it. I really do. 
helps to make these work days make a little more sense. Uh, like the uh, like the culture these types of streams uh, create good background noise. Yeah, like I was listening, I was working on some design stuff the other day while Steve was streaming his uh, final or getting his Milo mill set up. It's really great for that kind of stuff. Just like a chill background, chat, hang out, listen. Oh, you can kind of see my microphone mount in the corner there now, the where the boom arm goes to. Yeah. If the Prusa, Prusa XL is a bit spendy, there's Stealth Changer mod for uh, 2.4. Yeah, I just, I'm tired, not tired of, but I want to stop building Vorons. Um, I don't know what magic materials Polymaker uses, but their ASA is a breeze to print. Totally. It's almost all I print nowadays. Uh, this spool roller holder up on top of the machine here is... Um, uh, are you going to do memberships? Those seem to be gifted a lot. You know, uh, I, I'm going to, I guess. Um, try and figure it all out. You need a gene response gift for the Super Chats. That is a great call. I need to get the gene character animated. I need like a way to have like the gene character pop in and be like, thank you or whatever um, for Super Chats. Um, but yeah, no, I do intend to do memberships. I have memberships on the other channel and nobody really signs up for them. They all go and support on Patreon, which honestly I prefer. Um, but for live streams, it feel I feel like it does make more sense for a streaming channel than it does for regular channels. So I will. Uh, I will be setting that up. Just haven't done so yet. I've got some like little emojis and stuff and I want to work on maybe some Gene, Gene Merchy type of stuff. Maybe like a Gene sticker or something I can send out to folks. Just have a gif of Jack will destroying stuff. That'd be really good. I need a stream deck. I, I, re I literally reached out to Elgato this week and was like, hi, hi, I'm streaming a lot more right now. Um, will we have cat gifts? I hope so. Definitely want to get that going. Um, I really want to. I really need to have like a, a stream deck that I could like hit a button and have like when I drop something or I, or something falls over, I could like have Jekyll swiping at it or something, a gift pop up or or whatever. So, all right, looks like all the stuff, all the side, uh, everything side setup is there on that panel. I'm gonna pop the handle out. There's a handle hole. Might as well put the handle in. Uh, Touch Portal is a great alternative if you have 12 bucks and spare tablet. Yeah, um, I probably do. I know there's there's like there's even a, a free Stream Deck app for like Android and um, iOS devices. I just haven't gotten around to setting it up. And I want something just like nice, reliable. I don't have to worry about a char a charged tablet or phone. Snipping some little nubs here so I can pop out the side thing and get the handle in place. The transport handle, they call it. Ah. Bam. There's also a handful of like open source. 3D printable housing, like, you know, Raspberry Pi Pico or Pi Zero based, um, get a handle on the situation, um, based, like, Stream Deck alternatives. I know they exist. Um, I should really look at those. I mean, that would really fit, you know, do a video on Mandic really building it, and then I could use that as a segue to be like, by the way, I'm using this on my stream setup over on Mandic Labs. Go check it out. Maybe I should do that in the next couple of weeks. I got a spare Pi Zero or two, or I got to look at what they, they use for those. Uh, I think I got to pop out a couple of those rivets that I just put in. Yeah. There we go. Two of the ones I just put in come out and screws go in place for the handles. That'd be also be a good video, completely open source streaming setup. Yeah, that's a fun idea. 
I just built a standalone numpad running QMK and set up a layer to use macros for uh, I use most often. Totally logical. For me, I would like, I would like uh, the displays that the Stream Deck has, um, like the little LED displays they have, so you can see what each button is. Uh, because I press the wrong button all the time, <laughs> and um, I don't want to have to remember every scene button and and anything like that. Like I, I really do like the idea of being able to just look at it and go, oh, that's the scene that I want. That's the GIF, you know, I can have the image of the GIF or whatever. Uh, Millennium Machine Works, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for the uh, super chat. Appreciate it and appreciate you and all your hard work. Thank you. Uh, those displays are nice. I'm cheap though. Understandable. Understandable. Anyone ever get gaslit by looking at a color for a spool and when you print it, it's totally different? I've had that happen a few times, but not a lot. I've had some that definitely that, like do not look the same after printing, but uh, for the most part, I don't usually run into that too much, but I stick to Polymaker almost exclusively now. They are also the filament sponsor of the Mandic Really Mandic Labs channel, so um, there's that. <laughs> Michael, hello from Germany. Hello, welcome to the stream. Polymakers are, colors are pretty consistent too, uh, co color-wise, totally. Uh, I've really had luck with that. Nothing Photoshop wouldn't fix. Is that supposed to be a, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to use a shorter screw there or not. Why this is not going nicely. It's like it's not hitting the nut. Why? I don't run that out. Um, definitely consistent, but the color codes they provide aren't always accurate. I do agree with that. Their color coding, like they provide a hex code for your colors. And if you're like me and designer, I'll go in in Fusion and Photoshop and like set those colors sometimes. And I do find you're right. They're not, not totally accurate on that. At least they provide them and gives you a ballpark. So ah, this. I don't know why it's not catching. One of the problems with using inserted screws, I would like more ABS and ASA options from Cookie Cad and similar manufacturers. So would I. I'd love to see Cookie Cad have more options. Hopefully in the not too distant future, we will. You know, they're just trying to get a, a feel for the whole thing, you know? Uh, you talked about expensive high temp linear rails. Have you checked out Igus uh, iGlider uh, X bearing sliders? They're resistant to 250C. Nope. Um, are they, they're linear rod bearings, aren't they? Igus bearings, I would assume. There we go. I just had to push that in a little bit. All right, now that's in there. One handle done. One handle done. Okay. YouTube's yelling at me, trying to tell me to show you folks an ad. I'm not doing that. ASA is still fairly niche, so I get it. I do too. I did tell. Uh, I did tell the folks at, at Cookie Cad when they asked me about filament. Um, how I liked their ABS. I was like, I like it. Like it prints well, I'm happy with it, but I wish it was ASA. And they were like, ah, we, we were deciding on what we were going to do ABS or ASA. And like, I guess they, they consulted with the Voron team or they, they consulted with a few folks in pre-production 
And those folks told them ABS, not ASA. And I was like, ah, I wish you would have talked to me. <laughs> but, but they also tested materials. So maybe there was something wrong with the ASA they were trying. I don't know. Um, don't know. Okay, second side panel time. Second side panel. Second verse, something, something, something. I'm gonna pop out the handle while it's out. Save myself trouble. Uh, can that spool holder be printed supportless in ASA or ABS? Yes, totally. Uh, what about ASA fumes? Are they bad for your health? Yes, they are. They are as bad as ABS fumes. Um, they smell, like I find the smell less, but they're still bad for you. Actually, I also find they give me a headache less, but uh, you, you gotta use a filter. When printing ABS and ASA, you should be using a filter. Um, but these, these parts for this whole setup, um, my spool roller design here, were designed and tested in ASA entirely. This is ASA. Support free, completely, no supports required. Uh, it's a, I use the uh, internal bridging design hard to explain with I don't think I have fusion open right now to show you but it it is a a, a support free bridging design for the printing uh, the worst thing you might need to do is just snip off some like internal bridging boogers that might be hanging down or whatever just so the bearing fits in there as flush as it needs to though I did recess it in like 0.4 millimeters so it should print fine um, yeah I love the internal bridging design as do I I mean any styrene uh, fumes. Yeah, ASA still puts off styrene fumes. I mean, like, the bore of these to fit these bearings is, like, 20, 22 millimeters. And um, as long as your machine can bridge that distance, it'll work just fine. I printed these on my Voron 2.4, which is not the best bridging machine I have, and it totally works. Do you have any particulate sensors in the studio logging the amount of fumes that are present? No, I don't. I want to add that. I really do. And I think the next studio setup will probably get some project like that, like a long-term data logging kind of setup. And I'd like to track like when I'm doing metalworking and like all those kind of factors. Um, but I don't, no, I don't. All I've got is a couple of like household HEPA filters running around, um, running around here and that's largely it. Uh, I'm back for a minute just to say there's a plugin for Fusion to automatically do the internal bridging stuff, and it's amazing because otherwise designing them can be a pain. I got designing them down to a pretty good science, but I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, if you could drop that in like Discord or something for me, I would be curious to see that and play with it. So thanks. They can be a pain. They can like. Um, have you heard of Home Assistant? Yeah, I run Home Assistant. I don't really have much running on it right now. We're probably going to be moving in the not too distant future. Um, and I'm going to have to reset up a whole new studio. And I want to integrate Home Assistant much more, uh, much more into my setup. Uh, I have a carbon and HEPA filter on my 2.4, but... Uh, ABS smell still manages to escape. My panels are not that all well closed. Huh. Um, what are you running for filter? You run in one of the ones that externally events or the internal like a Nevermore. Um, ASA smells less in general in my experience. So that's a thing. Um, and so that might be a factor for you that it might improve but you should try and close like tighten that up a little bit better you know it's gonna be better for printing anyway reduce uh external on an exhaust box oh okay yeah see that's the problem you gotta internally it's better to have an internal filter system so that it um recirculates the air and doesn't reduce chamber temperature and also doesn't draw in air because an external exhaust, like the stock Voron design box, I I don't understand. I understand it like running it after your print, but during the print, it doesn't help. It just draws air in through 
all the cracks in your machine. So it's going to cause issue. Uh, the new 3D honeycomb infill is pretty nice. I, I just installed the latest... Um, yeah, exhaust won't scrub at all. A Nevermore or a bento box is the way. Yeah, because uh, a Nevermore... Um, a Nevermore or a bento box, they recirculate the air inside of a chamber, so they're continually scrubbing the air inside of there so that anything that didn't get caught the first time through a filter has a chance to be caught again, and it really makes a difference. Uh, find aluminum tape helps to close things up. Yeah, that'll do it. Also, a Nevermore really helps to increase chamber temperature, I find. Unlike my Voron 2.4, the Nevermore is underneath the bed. I just noticed the door was cracked open. Um, it's underneath the bed, so it draws the hot air under the bed and recirculates it into the chamber. Uh, so it'll raise the chamber temperature by multiple degrees just turning the Nevermore on. Um, so that really helps too. I'm really liking Orca Slicer 2.0. Yeah, I finally, I mean, I've been running Orca Slicer 2.0 for a little bit now, the betas, but I just installed Release Candidate, uh, the RC1 or whatever today. Um, I didn't realize it had come out. Mad Cat, welcome. Uh, I just installed the Release Candidate and I haven't played with 3D Honeycomb yet. But so far, I'm liking uh, the 2.0. Sure. I haven't played with scarf joints yet. I haven't played with most of the things that make it special. No problem with chamber temperature. All right, that's good. Have to invest in a Nevermore. Yeah, the Nevermore is... I love... I really like Nevermore. Uh, just found the filter. Yeah, I've heard of the filter. I just haven't used it yet. Um, I've been happy with the Nevermore. And actually, my 2.4 is printing the parts for the Nevermore Mini right now. Nevermore Mini is the new version. Um, Mini. Which, like, the regular Nevermore is the uh, micro. So, yeah. So, this is Nevermore Micro uh, V6. This is the one for my Voron Zero build. Um, Nevermore Micro. And it uses a pair of... Um, change cameras. Boop. A pair of 5015 blower fans. Draw in, and then in like the V0, uh, in my 2.4, this is underneath the bed, and then the vents coming out would come out the top, so they blow up along the door surface. Uh, the straight outlet is for machines where it's mounted vertically, like my Trident or the uh, Voron Zero it's going into. Um, but the Mini is the new one that just launched. I'm surprised nobody told me about it on stream as we've been streaming stuff. Um, scarf joints are cool, but I'm finding they need quite a bit of tuning to work properly with pressure advance. I was kind of worried about that. Um, I was stoked when I found the Nevermore that replaces the backpack on the Trident. Not familiar. Um, I got all the parts to print the Nevermore Micro. So, or Mini. That's what I'm going to be doing on the Trident build. The Trident uh, 300. How often do you change the carbon pellets? Like, they say to change them every, I think, five weeks. Something like that. It used to say on the... I think I scrubbed the... I, it, it, the, the design of the Nevermore did say on it how often to change them. Um, but I, I actually removed it from there when I remixed this. Um, I forget. Printed parts. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, they say to do it like every six weeks, I think. Personally, I do it like every three months. I let it go a while, and I really haven't noticed an issue with that. Um, Nevermore Mini. I should, if you haven't seen it, let me pull it up real quick. Nevermore Mini is interesting. That's what I'm going to be using in the trident build is nevermore mini um and i think it's really cool let me pull it up nevermore mini so mini is not small micro is smaller so for something like my voron zero mini would not work but for my trident mini will work so mini is this kind of like bulbous design 
Six weeks or 50 hours. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. 60 weeks, uh, six, something like that. Which 50 hours is like nothing, but yeah. Eh. So anyway, this is a uh, mini. And it's got a pair of like cartridges that stick to each side. Is there never more of it can be used in the X1C? Actually, Mini is designed with the capability to fit in an X1C, or you can use um, the Micro as well. So uh, they're not showing it here. The printables page, I think, has more info. Um, yeah, so Mini uses a 4028 fan up in the top here. Uh, so similar to the part cooling or the uh, cooling fans that I'm using on my um, Trident to cool the motors, but it also let's see if we can show it here. It also uses a wave share screen. Uh, yeah, bento box is designed for the X1C. That's what I'm running in my X1 is bento box, and I'm I'm happy with it. Um, so it can you can put a screen on it, and it actually has set up for particulate sensors or um, VOC sensors in Mini. So Mini can run this little display that you can use to control it. It's a touch screen from WaveShare. Uh, it runs a Raspberry Pi Pico, I believe, an RP2040. Um, so it can be controlled on its own. It has a HEPA filter that goes around the entire center mechanism. It's got two cartridge filter setups on each side for charcoal. Uh, for carbon. A, not worried about assembly. Assembly is not super straightforward because you got a lot of wiring and such. But yeah, it does have particulate sensors, uh, VOC sensor. I mean, not. I don't think particulate. I think VOC. Uh, and a little display. Uh, this is the latest thing that they've been coming up with. It's, it's pretty new. Um, I actually, I might just build this on a stream soon. I've got the parts kit. I bought a parts kit for this. Um, I got a parts kit from AliExpress to build it. Uh, actually, here it is, parts kit. And honestly, the parts kit was really reasonable. It came with a, a genuine Sunon fan. It came with a genuine Sunon fan and the genuine WaveShare screen. Um, for like the entire kit with the hardware, wiring, everything you need to assemble it, and some charcoal, as well as some charcoal. I don't think enough, really, but some. Um, yeah, HEPA for capturing, capturing the particulates, because that's, that's what Nevermore has been missing, is particulate filtration. <laughs> so that is interesting. Um, all this, this, the kit off of AliExpress to build the Nevermore Mini cost like the same as the screen and the fan would have cost me to buy here in the US. So um, really solid deal, I think. Let me grab a, let me double check how much that cost, but. Will you make a five kilogram version of that spool holder? Uh, thinking to put some five kilogram spools. I don't have any of the five kilogram spools to use. Um, or I would. I would, but I don't have any to to make it off of. Um, I could order some, but I didn't get that. Don't Maybe care. Try again. Uh, built you built the stealth max. I'm thinking my next 2.4 might get the stealth max. I think I might build the stealth max with my next 2.4 build. Um, here it is. Bloop, get a link. Copy. Head to chat. I'm dropping the link to the parts kit in chat now. That is an affiliate link, but that's the, um... Yeah, but, uh, that's the parts kit for the Nevermore Mini. It is an evolving project. It's new. It's very new. I think it's the newest, um, Nevermore um build out there right now so you know the parts kit might be out of date or something i don't know we'll find out i think i'm probably going to do a build stream on that maybe this weekend uh like i said the parts for it are printing on my 2.4 right now uh, i think they updated a bit lately for easier wiring it was a bit finicky when i did it yeah that sounds about right it looks like it's pretty finicky we're gonna play with that um we'll see 
I'm thinking about building one on stream because it's fairly new and interesting. And I need to build one for the Trident build. So, um, printed two regulars and dually that printed two regulars and dually them for a 5k. You could do that. Um, this is designed, my design for this spool holder is designed to, to bolt to the top of this. Um, so it's not sliding around or moving. So that would be an issue. You wouldn't be able to bolt it, but you could do that. Like this could be used on anything. It could just be set on the table next to something. That's the hard part about like designing a product and then like releasing it is like, I designed this for the Prussian enclosure, but it could be used on anything. I just, how do I market that without over, uh, it's weird. I don't know. Okay, back to the side panel. Oh, ba -ba -ba. Damn it, I just put one in the one spot I didn't want to. It's probably way better at Fusion than me. I mean, it wouldn't be difficult for me to make a five kilogram version of that if I had the exact dimensions. That's my problem. I just, I don't have any five kilogram spools. I would gladly do it if I had the spools to, uh, to fit it. I don't like making things without real world prototyping and testing them to be sure they are how I want them to be. So I could order five kilogram spools from Polymaker. They are a sponsor. Uh, and I do have a way of like ordering the stuff, but, um, I just don't have a use for it. <laughs> like, I use one kilograms mostly because I, uh, I could print them on a bunch of stuff. I usually run one kilograms cause I'm usually running on like multiple machines at once. So, but I'll, I'll look at it. I'll look at doing it, Kenneth. I need to order some filament anyway. So maybe I'll throw a five kilogram on there anyway. If nothing else, it'll be fun to just have a five kilogram sitting on the shelf. <laughs> Yeah, I really should get black in, in three and five kilogram. I go through it enough. K1 Max is being delivered right now. Cool. Hope you love it. Hope you love it. Uh, all right. Getting there, getting there. Couple more push pins. More push pins, put the second side handle on. Nope, not that one. I think tomorrow's stream, I'm gonna probably stream tomorrow. I've gotta work on my Neptune 4 Max. So I'm thinking tomorrow, I'm going, I, I need to get this done and out of the way because I need to get the Neptune 4 Max back up and running. Um, yeah, black, black three kilograms is what I use. Yeah. Black is so universal, it's worth it. Totally. Like, I go through black the most. I have the most spools uh, in back stock over on the shelf uh, in black. So it does make sense. Um, I got, yeah. I think I got a, a black three kilogram as well for this project, but I got this gray one because it's the specific color I want for the project that's going to be done, but... Um, Neptune 4 Max tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be doing linear rail conversion. I've got linear rails here to put on it. I hope they fit because they were sent to me for the Neptune 3 Max, but they should work. Uh, linear rail conversion. I think we're probably going to do Neptune Open or whatever, like the mainline clipper branch for the machine. Um, and something else. Oh, and tool head swap. They sent me a new tool head. I don't know why. Elgu, without telling me why, sent me a brand new tool head. Uh, Polymaker should offer jet black too. Yeah, I do wish they had jet black in more sizes. Uh, any tips for getting a 0.8 millimeter nozzle tuned on the Neptune 3 Max? I mean, I have my tuning guide. You can apply that to, on, on Mandic Really, there's a tuning guide that I did on the Neptune 3 Max. You can apply that to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. But honestly, it's just nozzle width you need to worry about and just adjust your nozzle width to what you need. I usually say five to 10% um, over nozzle diameter is what your nozzle width should be. So like 0 0.8, 0 0.85, like 0 0.8 and point, between 0 0.8 to 0 0.85 is where your nozzle width should be probably. 
for various things. Try setting it all to 0.85, print something and see if it has like too much going on, uh, top layer or whatever, like it's uh, rough on the top layer, then dial top layer down to like 0.8. Um, are you done with Trident? No, I'm waiting on parts for the Trident. Uh, there's a few parts I'm waiting on for the Trident that are kind of holding things up. So haven't really had a chance to get back to it because I'm waiting. Like uh, Vitali is working on, I'm not doing all wheel drive. Uh, I'm doing two wheel drive, nine millimeter belt. Um, Vitali is working on a nine millimeter CNC carriage for it. Um, adding a new product to his product line with nine millimeter for that. And he, uh, I'm waiting on him and I'm not going to rush the man for, you know, making a, uh, a one-off like new product, uh, for me to test out or whatever. So can't, can't look at a gift horse in the mouth when he's designing a whole new thing. You know? All right. Second handle. Da, da, da. All right. What do you think about the 100? Um, interesting. I like, there's a lot of really, uh, I don't want to say smaller, but smaller printer projects, like more mostly printed like Rook and 100 and such that I, I really like the idea of. I just, I can't justify the time for them. For me, I have to be able to justify that I'm going to use a machine to build it. Um, like I have an actual use for it. I don't want to build machines just for the... Well, I do want to build machines just for the sake of building them. I do love it. Can't look a gift horse in the mouth if the horse is still being made. I would not want to look at that horse in the mouth, I don't think. But you are right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to rush him. I'm not going to be like, bugging him about it. Um, yeah, like, I, I've got to just... I, it's got to be a machine that I really have a use for for me to build it right now. I'd love to get to a point where I can just build whatever machines just for the fun of it and then give them to folks or whatever, but it takes a lot more filament than I thought. I believe that. All right. I think we're at door time. Wait. Oh, I think it has us put the door or put the machine in before you put the doors on. Does it? Go to the next chapter for, no, for the Mark IV. Speaking of uh, filament, how much does it take to print all the 2.4 parts? I think a full 2.4 takes like half a kilogram of accent color and one to maybe one and a half kilogram of base color. Depending, it, it really depends on what you're printing and how, but... Um, but yeah, I think that sounds about right. That's what I would figure on if I was setting out to print the parts for one today. It would be about a half kilogram of accent color and one and a half of main. Okay, here we go. I was right. Yay. Okay, now we need a power supply assembly going on here. Giveaways do drive a lot of traffic if that's an option for you. Yes. Uh, how do I put this nicely? Giveaways are a great way to grow an audience you don't want. Uh, is probably the best way I could put it. Um, it's traffic that doesn't stay. Yeah, it's traffic that doesn't stay or it's traffic that then expects more giveaways and or starts to get people like butt hurt that they didn't win or whatever. It's not consistent enough. Totally. Um, yeah, I, I've really tried to move away from doing giveaways. Don't get me wrong, we will be doing giveaways. I've got a couple giveaways that will be coming on stream soon. But I'm not going to make a big deal about that. I want them to go to people like you folks who have been here supporting the streams. Um, uh, they're here only for the giveaways. Yeah. They just want free shit. Exactly. Um, 
I'm going to be doing giveaways on this stream, and we're going to be doing that as we move forward, hopefully more. I know I have, for a fact, at least one or two coming up in the very, very near future. Uh, but, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, is it a poop portal? <laughs> no. Um, it's actually a cookie cat film, and I know I have some of. Um, speaking of, don't forget to hit the like button. Yes, please do. Um... The next time I work on the 0.2 build, uh, the Cookie Cad 0.2 build, next time I work on that, I'm gonna give away some Cookie Cad filament. Uh, it's gonna be PLA, but um, but yeah, I'll be giving away some of their filament next stream on that machine. Um, so like stuff like that, you know, I, I do want to do that stuff, but I'd rather I don't want it to be the way that I grow. I want it to be a nice bonus for people who are already supporting what I'm doing. So like you folks. Do you have a part printed in the black ABS from Cookie Cat? It's not really black. Yes, I do. Um, it's not really black. It's dark magic. Uh, I mean, could you ship to the UK, for example? You see, it depends on the giveaways. Like for the Cookie Cat giveaway, I'll ship to the UK for that. Um, it requires a lot of logistical and infrastructure, cut out a lot of audience. Yeah, and that's part of the problem is like, I hate doing that stuff. I like to keep things open, um, but it's really hard. Cause yeah, it gets really expensive to ship stuff from the US to the UK or US to Australia. Uh, and then like, great, I grew a hundred people in audience. That's awesome, but it cost me a hundred dollars to do so. Is that worth it? Uh, who knows? Um, here's the, Cookie Cat Dark Magic ABS. So, uh, it is hard to see. So, let me let me get that camera. I'll go try and get a closer view of the camera. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, here it is. It's got like a color shift effect. It's more of a a really deep blue with hints of green and hints of purple uh, and a glittery shimmery effect. And honestly, this barely does it any justice. It's really hard to tell. It, it's really hard to translate on stream. Um, I'll try and do a better job in like a video at some point, but yeah. Yeah, that is Dark Magic. Dark Magic ABS from uh, Cookie Cat. Uh, yeah, they only have Dark Magic in, in ABS. I think they must be better in the sun. It's a lot better in the sun, totally. Um, they only have Dark Magic ABS and Unicorn ABS right now, as far as I know. Um... Like, that's Unicorn. So, like, I think this is probably the stealth mini Stealth Burner we'll use on the build. So, it's got a dark magic face with a, a Unicorn gradient rest of the body. Um, yeah. I, I really like Unicorn as well. I think right now in ABS, they only have Unicorn and Dark Magic. They had to start with something because, you know, they're, they're, they're a really small company. It's two people. Cookie Cat is two people. It's... Nathan and Melissa, they're sweethearts. They are legitimately friends of mine. They're excellent people. And um, so, you know, they can't buy a truckload of different colors. So. If folks are interested and they start selling, um, those are the ones I see on the site. Okay, that's good. Uh, if folks, if there's a demand, I'm sure they will expand colors, but that's what they've got for right now. So, okay. Uh, let's get this done. I see you, dog. I do. <laughs> the dog is like, I know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? You should know what time it is. Yeah, you want to say hi to stream? You want to say hi? No, you just want something. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. 
That's my face. All right, I gotta look at the instructions a little bit and figure out where I'm at. <gasps> Sorry, I need two hands. It is time to eat. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> That's what her problem is. It's it's uh, about that time for her. All right. Complete opposite of the kitty. Eh. Yeah. Oh, she has a clock. Domino has a clock. She uh, she has an internal clock, and it does not mess around. Okay. Just want to look here. What, if anything, I'm missing about the wiring. Nope. Doesn't look like anything. Andrew Rogers for the Good Girl Treats Fund. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'm expecting to, you to animate the dog, too. The goal... We have a goal of getting the whole family animated at some point in different, like, character forms. Um, that's absolutely the goal. For right now, we're starting with Gene, but eventually that is the goal. Um, okay, in fact, thank you, Andrew Rogers, so much for the super chat. I'm going to go feed her real quick. And when I do, I'm just going to send a, a... I'm sorry, I'm trying not to do ads on stream. But I'm gonna start. I'm gonna send an ad real quick just to give me the time to step away, and go get her food, and then I will be right back and we'll get back to this. Uh, is Jean called Jean because she's gray? Yes. Her full name is Jean Gray Mandic. Yes. Jean is called Jean because she's gray. Yes. Jean Gray Mandic. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go feed Domino her dinner. Yes, I said the word, and we will be right back. I know. I know. I know. I said it. I'll be right back, folks. All right, dog fed, I'm back. Sorry about that. YouTube premium. I know, I thought of that as soon as I walked away. I'm like, oh, right, YouTube premium's a thing. Um, so, sorry, back back to what we were doing. She's taken care of. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, as I hit the, the ad thing and I started to walk away, my screen, my TV, happy manufacturing, welcome. Um, my screen didn't have an ad pop up and I'm like, oh, why didn't it have an ad? Oh, right, I have YouTube Premium. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, okay, we're back. She would have been a terror if I didn't uh, get her fed, so I don't blame her. It's my choice to start streaming now. I don't blame her. Okay, enclosure. PSU cables. That's the cables. That's LED strip. Here's the panel that goes back here. I need a panel. I need this piece. 
Your girlfriend has a, a guinea pig named Gandalf. I'm assuming it's gray. H did it turn white at any point? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Jean Gray. Zelda. My other cat's named Zelda. Her Jean's sister is named Zelda. Honestly, legitimately, uh, Zelda was... I, I rescued an entire litter of kittens years ago. That's where Jean came from. Um, they, my, my parents' neighbor... Their uh, cat had a litter of kittens in their woodshed, in my parents' woodshed. It just, it was an outdoor cat. It had a litter in their woodshed. I went over to their house and I rescued the whole litter. I had white socks. Okay. Um, and that's where Jean came from. She came from that litter. Her sister, Zelda, was also in that litter, but I didn't expect to keep Zelda. Um, I, I was looking for new homes for all of them. I didn't expect to keep Zelda. So I just gave her kind of a random geek name, nerd name. And then I ended up keeping Zelda and actually uh, she's my, she's daddy's girl. She's my cat by a long shot. Um, so it's just silly. I just gave her a random name that she's now stuck with because of that. And that's that. Okay, I need magnets for this. I heard the magnets stick to something. So I think I found them. All right, magnets. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Magnets, screws. So three of these long magnets go into this printed piece. I should probably pull up the instructions so you folks can see what I'm looking at here. Three magnets go into this. Piece. Oh, these are strong magnets. They're stuck together. Wow. Are these stuck together? All right. Um, push three magnets into the retainer. Okay. That's a tight fit. Uh, are the Prusa, are the Prusa printed parts still made of PETG? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I think they use ASA for like the hot end mounting parts or the fan shroud. I think the part cooling fan shroud they use ASA, uh, but everything else is PETG. So these are PETG, I'm certain. Uh, so they don't warp, but are somewhat strong. Yeah, I mean, PETG is a great great material for open machines. Shrouds, ASA, everything else is PETG. Yeah. They have some molded parts, too. Yeah, they do have molded parts now. Um, I half expect over time I will probably reprint the parts in ASA for my, my Mark IV, but I don't know. Okay, there's that. Assembled. Okay, now this panel gets the handle piece here with a couple of inserted square nuts. They don't mention anything about needing to switch to ASA when you put it in the enclosure. They don't. Um, because their enclosure, this isn't going to be a hot box. Um, hexagon it like a boron. Yeah, I could. I'm sure if... If I reprint the parts for the for the Mark IV at all, I will modify the heck out of them because I can't leave anything alone. Um, this it's not like this is actively heated or whatever, so it's it's more of an anti-draft box. Agreed. I think that's that's probably a more accurate statement about what this enclosure is. Um, so they don't need. Seeing people run a Mark IV in an enclosure for a while with PETG, with, or Mark III, without issue. Haven't noticed any difference between PETG and ASA. I don't expect a difference. Will PETG not deform uh, over time? Will it not deform PETG parts? It could. 
Honestly, it's the temperature. I would worry about deforming it more over time. PETG can creep more than, um... I thought that a part I had printing looked wrong. Uh, do I redesign STLs? No, I don't mess with STLs. It's been a long time since I did any messing with STLs. I despise it, and I don't hate myself enough to keep doing that. You only need uh, if you put a chamber heater in there. Yeah, Zero G. Zero G sent me a link for like a a, a resin um, chamber heater to put in here uh, to help warm it up a little bit. I might do that. If I do that, I will need ASA. What print bed would you recommend for uh, X1C printing ASA? Uh, my personal favorite. Let me uh, look it up real quick. I quite like... Uh, The only print bed I use in mine. Let you know if it works well. Actually ordered it, it should be here within 12 days. Cool. Uh, I might order one as well, but I might wait to just hear what you have to say about it. Uh, the print bed I personally use on my uh, Carbon, X1 Carbon. Where is that? Ah, damn it. It looks like they might be out of stock. Oh, no, they're not. They're not. Okay. Uh, the one I use, personally, I might order another one. It's on sale for 30, 36 bucks. It's not the cheapest one in the market, but... Dropping it in there. I had a Wham Bam Pex. I didn't like it, personally. It worked just fine. I just didn't like how smooth it was. It was too smooth. Um, I just dropped in chat. It's not an affiliate link. It's just... Hector is a supporter, but whatever. He's sponsoring my trip to uh, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Thank you to Fabrico. Fabrico's uh, PEI plate, the smooth one. I have a double-sided smooth. I have a couple of them. Uh, I put so much ASA down on those. I love them. Um, I still use Magigoo or, well, uh, Bamboo's version of that. But I just use that so it's really easy to pop off of there. Yeah, Honey Badger plates. Um I've never tried their textured one. I only use the smooth one personally because I like smooth PEI personally. Um, the PEX plates, I had a Wham Bam Pex, Plex, uh, PEX plate. I used it a lot and it, it was good. Um, it stuck well, all that. What I didn't like about it was everything looked shiny after it came off the PEX. And the, um, the Honey Badger has a more satin look to it uh, that I like personally. Um, so that's what I use. I use the honey badger plate and I really like it. It's also what I have in my 2.4 right now as well. I have one of those honey badger plates. Sharp corners and yes, shiny. Yeah. Uh, is Fabrico smooth similar to Prusa satin with a texture point of view? I believe so. I, it's been a long time since I've seen, I don't know what I've ever seen actually, uh, a satin PEI print from Prusa. Uh, I could show, I mean... I mean, like, this was printed on the satin plate yesterday, or the other day. I don't know if that shows very well. Probably not. Like, for the most part, it's a, or the, uh, the Fabrico PEI, smooth PEI. I think it's more of a satin finish, personally, and I really like that, so. Uh, do you need an AMS to print some of the parts, uh, in your 2.4? No, you don't need an AMS to print, uh my parts like i did them no but yes um like the the stealth burner on my personal 2.4 was printed with a ams um to achieve the look and you would need something like that my personal designs that i have put out there for people for the voron so like my touchscreen bezel and my umbilical mount and all that, which do have multicolor elements to them, don't require an AMS. They're designed to be printed where you print like one color, you, uh, it's a, it's the single nozzle multicolor method. I think, uh, Daniel Modbot's done a video on it. It's a little hard to explain quickly. I should do a video about it, really. Not switching with M600. No, it's not that. 
what it is is it's a multi-body part. You import the multi-body part into um, into the uh, slicer. You separate it into multiple parts. Then you delete the part you don't want to be the one to be one color. So like for my stealth burner, it's got hexes on the face of it. You delete the stealth burner body, but you leave the hexes exactly where they are. You print the hexes in the color you want them to be as just one print. Then you do not move them off of the bed at all. You then go back into the slicer and control Z, like undo deletion of the stealth burner body. Then you delete the hexes and then you print the hexes with the other color. Um, and you one the one thing you have to do is you have to use Z hop and Z hop has to be higher than the layers of the first part. So the hexes are only like 0.4 millimeter tall. So you just need to use a 0.4 millimeter Z hop. And then when that tool head moves, it'll go over top of them and not collide with them. And that's how you print like my shroud. Um, it, it works, but only about 0.4. You can do 0.6 and you can kind of get away with it, but I only designed them to be 0.4. Sounds risky. It's not as risky as it sounds. It works really, really well once you figure it out. Um, so that's what the, yeah, that's what the stealth, uh, the uh, V0 tool head does. I should do a really quick video on, on this channel. I'll probably do a really quick video about it because I design a lot of parts that use that method, but I've never done a video explaining it in detail just to make it easy for people to understand. I should really do that so I can quickly and easily link people to that video. So I'll do that soon. Uh, it works great. Done it on my stealth burner. Yeah. Um, I have a stealth burner right here that I printed that way, but, but yeah, that's the way I design most because when I release Voron parts, I don't want them to have to use a bamboo to print Voron parts. I want to, I want Vorons to be able to print Vorons. So yeah. Um, might be able to be a short. I'll probably do a short and a long form. You're right. Shorts get attention and it would be a good short to do. I've, I've filmed it. I filmed it on TikTok once before. And I don't think I ever posted it. Um, so it, I can fit it into a minute. It's doable. The explanation of the method that is. You can also just hack two G code files together to automate it and not have to worry about bed cooling. That's a good idea. Um, a little more advanced, but definitely not a bad idea. Just put in an unload command or something at the end, in the ng code of the first one and not the disable heaters. For me, the, the most pain in the ass part about it for me when I do it, the only thing that's really annoying about it, though I kind of learned not to do it, um is not placing my parts in the middle of the bed. Um, are you going to do a new tool head M12 mount now that G2 has an extra mounting point? I didn't know that G, uh, uh, M2 or uh, uh, G2 has an extra mounting point. I will look at that. Um, I updated my hex tool head design. I will look at that and see about that because I would like to do a different uh, cable gland and update it to not have to mount the way it does any thoughts on the frozen arco i haven't talked to them uh i've a few of us in a few of us in uh the community like creator community have kind of been chatting about that where like the rumor that i have heard this is only a rumor i have not been told this expressly from a, a blah 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 um is that they haven't sold as many of them as they really hope to and the person I heard that from said, yeah, well, you didn't send them to any influencers or content creators to to show the machine off, to build buzz, to get people interested, to buy them on Kickstarter. What do you expect? Um, the Kickstarter's almost over, and I don't know of a single other content creator who has one. I haven't even been contacted by them, so I don't know. Um, to me, I'm really concerned it's going to be vaporware. Uh, I think the Arco, I think the, the Frozen Arco will come out. I don't know about the Frozen Arco AMS unit. I question whether it's actually going to come out. Like the uh, Anchor Make multicolor setup that they decided not to make. I wonder. I wonder.
Okay. Where was I at here? Uh, there's a printed piece that goes in here. I don't need that. These go in here. Prepare the printer with the power supply. Place the power supply on a cloth. Don't care. Slide the PSU on the screws and tighten. What screws? Makes me wonder about Z-Wobble, yeah. Just see, keep seeing ads for it on, on Instagram. Yeah, there's a lot of ads on Instagram. Ooh, my print just finished on the, the X1. I could show you folks. Slice Engineering just did a video about them. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I saw Slice went, I was kind of amazed to see Slice headed to China to work on something, which that's a solid thing. Like, I like that both Slice was open to working with them and I like that they, I assume, reached out about that. Like, somebody had to have crossed that bridge there. Be like, hey, come, you know, whatever. Yeah, they're going to be making slice nozzles for the backers. I heard that. Uh, I, I did remove the power supply from the from the printer. It's right here. I'm just, it says to mount it onto screws, but it doesn't tell me where the screws are. Where they go on here. But I can see. Prepare the printer. Oh, wait. Join the handle with the power supply. Push the other end. Blah, 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 blah. Where do these screws go? Oh, the standoffs over here. This is confusing. Okay. Align the open grooves of the power supply with the screws. Let me see if I can figure out what screws they're talking about here. It's not those. And that would interfere there. What are they talking about? This is definitely, in the, this handle that goes on here is in the right position. Then they talk about putting this little screen, this little thing on here. And then they immediately tell you to put the screws and st like standoffs. They skipped a step here. There's a pair of screws and standoffs right here that are supposed to be installed, but they don't tell you to do that or show you doing that at any point. Okay, it goes on this side though, that's good. I can see this little L here. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not actually showing you folks the instructions, I just realized. So, it's like the instructions go from put this handle on, and then they tell you to put this little piece in that I don't need for reasons we'll talk about in a minute. And then they tell you to just install the power supply, but they never tell you to put the screws that the power supply installs onto in. Like, how are you supposed to know that? They show you needing them, but they don't show you putting them in. Anyway, there they go. A couple of little standoffs and screws. Uh, an error in a Prusa manual. I can't believe it. I mean, yeah, they, they, this manual does feel a little less um, complete than other ones that I have experience with with Prusa. But I've heard that from more than one person who says that they have, uh, they've run into the same problem. Not necessarily that exact same problem, but they've, they've had, they felt the uh, manual for this was not as good as most Prusa manuals are. Okay, so now these screws go. Let's see if I can see this on camera. Lower the desk a little bit. All right, these screws go here. It's next to impossible to see probably on stream, but they go on the side where this L is facing up because the power supply kind of rests against that and that's part of the part I was missing, like where that went. So now the power supply goes like this. It slips down over these standoffs with the screws. I got that threaded in too far.
any time now. I got this threaded in just a little too far. Also, these are too big. No, it's just not threaded out far enough. Standoff's got to be fairly far out. There, the screw. It's got to be out to the point where it's almost not not in at all. It's got to be like a thread. It needs to be like an M3 by 14, not M3 by 12. Bedtime. Thanks for being here. Carrie, appreciate the support as always. Have a good night. Have a good sleep. Good snoozles. All right. Let's try this again. Yeah, now that's working. This one needs to be just a little looser. There we go. That was annoying. It's got to be like just barely in there. Just barely. Sorry, microphone's going to be in view for a minute. Okay, let's look at the instructions. Uh, tighten the screws. Okay. Go play tech support for your parent, your grandparents. Good luck, Tor. Appreciate you stopping by. Good luck with that. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Okay. Oh, okay, and there's a screw that lines up on the side here. I assume it's meant to lock this in a little bit. Uh, use a 632 screw. Okay. 632 screw. Comes with a couple of 632s here. All right. And they've got a Phillips head. Where's my LTT stubby? Stubby LTT, LTT screwdriver's got a Phillips in it. Now that goes inside. That only just kind of like threads in. Not a very tight screw. All right. Now there's a cover for the power supply. Cover the power supply. Is that the same original one? How do you like the LTT stubby screwdriver? It's a little too stubby, honestly. Um, quality's excellent. Ken, welcome. Um, the quality's excellent. Uh, it's just a little switch screen, uh, scenes. Um, the the tip of it's a little stubbier than I might like. Like it needs like a just a little little bit longer sometimes. But it's really handy to just like grab a quick little screwdriver and go and it does fit places that the original screwdriver doesn't so it's very handy in that respect there's some I have a, I have another one of those around here I should do a giveaway on that soon I don't know where the piece they're asking for is the uh, cover for the power supply plugs or the uh, connections oh there it is power supply is this the original it's the original one okay i guess you just use the original one reuse the old part yep okay and reuse the old screws we can do that we can do that <coughs> and this just goes in here how This came out of here. It's clearly got to fit in here. Or does it? This can't be the right part. Ah, it's not. That's why. That wasn't the right part. This is the part I'm looking for. <laughs> they look very similar. It's like, they both have these little openings in the bottom for wires. Print a revolver screwdriver till you have enough budget for the LTT. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's not a cheap tool. They're not cheap tools, but I am very fond of them personally. I quite like them. That seems like it's way too short of a screw. So 
an M3 by 10? Yeah. Why aren't you going? Go in your home. There it goes. Okay. I feel like I'm missing a wire here. There's one extra wire. It's still connected to the machine, so... I can't do that without bringing that over here. I'm going to hold off on that for the minute. I'm just going to put this cover on. Temporarily. It'll have to come back off. Alright. Power supply covers on temporarily. Cool. A little terminal cover so you don't shock yourself. And mount this to the back of the... Guide the cable through there. And then it gets sleeved. I'm just not going to do that yet because I need to sleeve it with the at the third cable setup that goes in here. I don't have that on here right now. I was going to have to wait. Now it slides in through the back. Oh, it goes from the inside out. Weird. Inside out. Going up. Microphone came loose. Okay, this goes in from the inside. I'm doing this wrong. Goes this way. It like shoehorns through here. Okay. Ah. This is weird. This is weird. I gotta climb inside of here real quick, I guess. You really can't see anything. There's like weird quarter turn things that hold the power supply back here. Okay. It works. Strange, but it'll work. A little strange, but it'll work. Okay, what's next? Installing the power supply, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I need to remove those cables and put on different ones, I'm now realizing. Because I've got the uh, power supply quick release set up that comes with a, like a Molex plug of sorts. It's supposed to go on there. I just realized that. Dough. Okay, oh well. We'll change that. We can do that. I wasted my own time a little bit, but we can fix that. I need a hex wrench that reaches down in here. Wrong size. Where'd I put the one that I have? On top of the machine. Okay. This little cover on the back here has to come back off. Move this monitor a little bit so the light can maybe get in here better. Ha! 
Have you had any 3D printers catch fire? Um, I hear about it a lot, but never experienced it. I have not either. Honestly, it used to be more of a problem when uh, things were a little less safely designed. Um, the potential exists for an electrical fire on anything like this, well designed or not. It's just not a common problem anymore. And I personally go out of my way to de design things and or set things up so that they shouldn't happen. A net A1 moment, yeah. And supposedly the fix for the A1 is coming. We'll find out, supposedly. Okay, I can take all these terminals off back here now. cables out. Now the new ones go in and they're just like pretty short little buggers that get right up in there. Whole thing must have damaged Bamboo Labs a lot. One would assume. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? All right, remove the printer. Blah, blah, blah. This little thing goes this way. Let's look at the instructions for this. This little jumper board thing. Take the cover off. Oh. And the reds go to that side. We can do that. Just saw a post about a Prusa fire at a bed connection. Damn. You're saying dough. Grant says diddly. Modbot laughs like Dr. Hibbert. Uh, what's it? What's with the uh, 3D printing content creators impersonating Simpsons? Don't know. Here we are. I'm bald, so kind of makes sense. Grant has the luscious head of hair like, uh, like, um, Flanders, and uh, Daniel is not black. So there's that. <laughs> Don't know. Could just get a government subsidy. Ah, who knows? I don't know how any of that stuff works. I know they've been I know they've been working on it, and I know they supposedly have a fix, so we should be seeing fixes soon. I'll probably do an update uh, a stream when I update mine. I still have an A1. They they asked me if I wanted to keep the A1 that I have or send it back. And I said I'd keep it and I'll do an update. Uh, like I'll do the upgrade when it uh, comes out. So like the fix, whatever. I'll probably do a stream on that, I guess. All right. Reds go to the left. I need a better, I need another zoom lens on this camera over here. I should really switch to a different lens on this camera so I can zoom both of these. I'm using a fixed wide angle on that one right now. Remind them to properly test in the future. I uh, saw the Prusa one as well. Caused issue where the bed meets the, where the power meets the bed. Looked to have cooked the cover a bit. That stinks. I've seen that happen before. Not personally, but I have seen pictures of that happening. I've seen pictures of that. All right, now this goes into the opening here. 
maybe have a handheld stream camera to move into tight places. I should. I have a, a, a DJI action camera that I've used in stream once or twice. Um, I should do that. I have it set up over here where I could like move it in closer. So good call. I'll try and get that set up for next stream. All right, that goes there. This little plug plugs in here. Plugged. All right, now I think I put the power supply cover back on. If this is gonna fit now, pretty sure I was supposed to put it back on. Uh, that's part of the problem. They want the ground running over everything else. I've got it under. It's probably gonna help it fit better. Me, come on. Where's the regular LTT screwdriver? This will be better. Stubby's not helping me here. Stubby's working against me. I'm using your Galileo tool head umbilical thing on tap changer, so it's a nice solution. Um, nice place compared to others. Awesome. Love to hear that. Hopefully it works out well for you. I'm going to look at maybe updating it. Fitting this pizza in my mouth. <laughs> um, I'm going to look at updating it. Uh, maybe with the new mounting from G2. Somebody mentioned earlier. I'm going to look at it more later. After stream probably. But right now I've been happy with it. I had, to, I had at least one person say, well, that's I know Hart K was worried about it when I released it, that it was going to cause extrusion issues because of the way it could pull on the motor mounting. I've had no issues, so I don't know. I've had no issues, but I can see how it could cause an issue. So whatever. All right. Need a different angle of attack. Boom. There we go. Okay, now I can put this cover back on. Terminal cover. What are you doing? Hitting something. Oh, uh, it's that ground I just put on is like right next to where this printed part's gotta go. It's gotta be clocked like just right. Um, thing about enclosures with bed slingers is the enclosure has to end up being so big. Agreed. It is definitely like this. When I first started putting this enclosure together, I'm like, man, this thing is huge. But then I re remembered, oh, right, bed slinger. It needs to be big. That's like I made that silly printable enclosure uh, on Manic Really before for that I was going to put the Neptune 4 Max in. And that thing was so freaking big. Um... And I just, I just never got around to putting it in there because it was just <laughs> so darn big. What are you doing? Doesn't feel like this is catching. Yeah, maybe it is. There it goes. Just pulling itself in. All right. Working on closing my V2 with a lack enclosure. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Power supply covers on. Okay, everything else is about putting the machine in the printer for this page. So, uh, looks like it's time to put the printer in. So I'm gonna take this out of the way and we can bring the printer back over because I gotta hook up the cable, the wires on the printer. What is this piece for? Oh, this is a close off for that. Well, that's that's not important to me. I'm kind of put it over that opening for now. All right, uh, we got doors, filter and light installation left, but I gotta put the power supply cables the new power supply cables on the machine. So 
This needs to get out of the way. I'm going to put the table down rather than try to lift this like this. I can. Why wouldn't I? Honestly, it's not as heavy as I expected it to be. Not as heavy as I expected. Mark four back. I hit one of the buttons on the standing desk by accident. Okay. I already got the power supply cables off of there, except for the ground, which the ground need to come off too. Good place to look for a list of V2.4 mods. Um, I mean, there's a... Did you get Haribos with kit? There are Haribos included with kit. Um, uh, I'm blanking right now. Uh, it's unofficial. TeamFDM.com is one place to look for. Um, mods. It's not necessarily uh, particularly s supported by the Voron team, but teamfdm.com. Uh, and then there's the official Voron mods, which is on GitHub. Um, they're not official mods, but that's the official place that mods are uh, not sorted, but uh, cataloged, I guess you say. But yeah. Right. New ground cable goes in. New ground cable in. I'm going to leave this just a little loose. Curated. Curated is a good, good word for it. Yeah. Curated is a good word for it. Okay. Now these got to go up in here. Are Har Haribo's vegan? No, they are not. No, they aren't. That's why I haven't had any, unfortunately. They aren't. It's a sad part. I, I'm going to be real disappointed if and when I get a uh, an XL. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they come with a big bag of Haribos. I do. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of gummy candies. So, gelatin. Yeah, I think it's gelatin in them. Plenty of... Uh, Oreos are technically vegan. They're technically not as well. I eat them. I don't worry about it, but they are technically not. Depends. And, like, really strict vegans won't eat them. I eat them. Technically not how. Um, uh, Elizabeth, it's uh, the sugar. Um, a very typical processing fat... Um, Processed artificial, yeah, the it's not that much the artificial, the processed sugar. Uh, it's not uncommon when manufacturing white bleached sugar for man, uh, for baking and whatever. It is filtered through bone char, through basically charcoal, is one of the, the filtration steps for some processed sugar. And so that technically means that some bone charcoal could be in the sugar uh nabisco has said the thing about it is that's why like nabisco doesn't claim oreos are vegan because a big company like that buys sugar by the truckload sometimes the sugar is processed that way sometimes it isn't depends where they get it from and as such they can't guarantee that the sugar used in your oreo batch isn't filtered that way so as such they're not technically vegan it's just whether or not the vegan is that particular about this this thing there's a lot of those dumb little things that people don't think about like uh various wines are not um various wines aren't vegan friendly because they are 
processed, filtered through fish, like liver, uh, uh, stomachs or something like that. Like the traditional way of making like French wine is like filtering it through, uh, fish guts effectively. And as such, they're not vegan. Same thing for like, I think Guinness isn't vegan for that same reason. There's actually a, a whole website for liquors and such. We use animal products in some pretty unexpected places. Yeah. I only eat gluten-free steak. There you go. You're eating a vegetarian. Ah, damn it. I screwed myself up here. Uh, quick release cable. Uh... UK has Percy Pigs, a range of gummy sweets which are vegan friendly. It's a cultural phenomenon here. Awesome. Uh, veganism is an ethical stance. It's not a status. You go as far as you go. Honestly, uh, Guinness is fish butter filtering. Still enjoy them myself. Yeah. Uh, what about haggis? <laughs> well, that's definitely not vegan. Um, yeah. Uh, I You know, a, a vegan restaurant in Austin one time had a sign outside that was my favorite definition of veganism. And it was basically do as little harm as you can. You know, uh, what about animals that are killed when growing crops? Do they count? That's the dumbest I've got you, ha, got you thing possible. Sure, some mice are gonna get killed in the field when they're, when wheat is getting processed and etc. Does that change when you're eating meat? Is that the reason to eat a cow because the feed that that cow ate might have a little bit of mouse in it. Again, my favorite definition of veganism is try to do the least harm you can. If you're dead broke, if you physically, like you are starving and you need to eat and the only thing you can eat is somebody who's willing to give you a hamburger, fucking eat the hamburger. Like, do the, do the best you can is the best that I, is the way that I look at it. Personally, I've always been pretty well in a position to like, I'm privileged white dude. Like I've just, you know, I can, I can get away with stuff or whatever. Like it is what it is. Um, I can, I can live and I can deal and I can, I can get by without having to, to eat meat or cheese or whatever. So personal, that's my personal stance. People have different opinions. Um, Damn it, this is like really stuck in here, a zip tie. Oh, it goes through the frame? I can't tell. Come on, this zip tie's really stuck. Uh, we had a great vegan sushi place in Las Vegas. I love fish sushi, but the place vegan sushi was so awesome. They didn't survive the pandemic, unfortunate. Uh, the most vegan way to do things is to garden totally and that they, see there's a point like I live in the city of Philadelphia You're right. The most ethical way to be would be to grow your own stuff. I Don't have the means to do that. So there is a place where I'm making a concession. I Try to shop as ethically as I can, but I can only do so much. So uh, Yeah, totally Uh, my roommate is vegan, but also won't waste food if it's offered something that has meat in it because the meat has been cooked. It's the it's done. Uh, some people call that like freegan. Uh, it, it, that kind of varies in definition. But yeah, like that's some people like I wouldn't I would turn it down personally. But I totally understand that stance. Like it's going to go to waste anyway. So like whatever. I get that. I don't judge, like, you do whatever the hell you wanna do. I'm not here to judge anybody the way they live, unless they're harming other people, is what it comes down to. Yeah, I've referred to my vegan, my roommate as freegan before, yeah. Cows actually aren't vegan, they just have a plant-based diet. Yeah, I mean, like, cows have killed and eat meat. They're, they're, uh, they're like, kinda like, a, a lot of animals are, a lot of animals are, 
opportunistic carnivores or omnivores that are opportunistic. So like a deer will eat a carcass of an animal if it wanders across it. Like, uh, do crops grown with animal manure count? Yeah, technically, because a, an animal does not have to be harmed to produce manure. Cow's gonna shit, you know, like a healthy cow. I could raise cattle and just raise them as pets and use their manure in my garden. They're going to be shitting. So, you know, it's good except vegan cheese. See, and I think that's part of the, the thing that I've gotten away with for the longest time is I hate cheese. So, um, for me, not a big deal. <laughs> I just don't like cheese. So not a deal for me. Uh, okay. That cable, this goes up to here. Yeah. Okay. Get, grew up in Wisconsin. Can't give up cheese. I think you'd be disowned. Wouldn't you? You'd be like, you'd be removed from society. I love cheese. So I'd have a problem. Yeah. Most people don't notice, but like this tattoo on my forearm, um, death before cheese with a knife through a big cheese block uh, is because I just don't like cheese. Like I just, I, I stopped eating cheese when I was like 12. It just wasn't for me. Already been dis disowned for moving to California. Okay, that's reasonable. Well, that's not reasonable, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a like on the stream. Thank you, inexpensive prince. Uh, thank you. I am so bad about self-promotion. I appreciate you folks who helped me do it and remember to do it. If you gave up cheese, you'd be disappeared. <laughs> cheese and ice cream are deal breakers. See, there's really good vegan ice cream these days. Uh, it's definitely a little different, but you can get some really good vegan ice creams. I don't miss that at all. Uh, tofu has the same manufacturing process as cheese. It's technically the vegan thing that is closest to actual cheese in terms of production. Of manufacturing yeah and i like tofu and i'll i'll eat like tofu cheeses um like uh like there are some vegan cheeses i'll eat like i can make i make a tofu ricotta for like uh stuffed shells that is delicious tofu it's tofu um nutritional yeast is a like kind of cheesy tasting product that i really like we call it slut dust around our house because we're sluts for it um and yeah. Uh, almond based ice cream is pretty good. There was uh, something like Dibs chocolate covered ones that were that just kind of had an aftertaste an off aftertaste. That's not uncommon. Um, some vegan ice creams. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're talking about that product. I've had that before. Uh, and it's usually the problem. The biggest problem with vegan products in general, I find, is when they're trying to be healthier. So then they'll like it's like an okay vegan ice cream it would be delicious but then it was like sugar-free vegan ice cream or something like that which that's the part that ruins it that that's annoying <laughs> you just got to learn to like deal with those or find those workarounds that you like or don't like or whatever okay i got all the cables onto the power supply or the uh, the buddy board here I think I gotta put the cover back on the buddy board now. Yeah, cover back on the buddy board. Cover back on the buddy board. As soon as I find the hex wrench. I should show you folks the print that just finished on my X1. I designed something new this morning. Uh, I want to test them before I uh, release. Is the Mark IV worth a steep price? I don't have enough test time in on it to give my 
official full answer. Um, so far, I really like the Mark IV more than I expected I would. Uh, yeah, vegan products seem to be tied to, like, really... Uh, have you tried the uh, Misozuku or whatever? I, I know what you're talking about, the Mizoki or whatever vegan cheese. I haven't tried it. Um, it's trying too much to be like cheese for me, so I think I wouldn't like it, but I don't know. What'd you design? Um, yeah, let me grab the parts real quick. Off the bed. They gotta be fairly cooled down by now. Uh, your Tom Gardner, you use your Mark IV for precise parts. It's the only machine that does corners well for you. Cool. I don't regret the Mark IV at all. I was, uh, was one of the reasons. Zero issues, nothing but consistent quality. Good to hear. I mean, there are... Uh, I haven't checked on Black, uh, Black Metal Vegan Chef's channel in a long time. I don't think... I haven't seen that channel in a long time either. Uh, okay, new parts that I designed. Uh, I designed little 1515 versions of my, um, my corner braces for... Um, for V-Zeros, Voron Zeros. So corner frame braces for Voron Zeros. I shrunk them down, M3 hardware. They fit a 1515 extrusion now. So, yeah, these ones are going to go in my uh, V0.1 to V0.2 upgrade. Um, this was printed on the, on the AMS. That's why it's got the green accent on the inside. So that's not how the design file will be released, unfortunately. But, yeah. Uh, this is for the Zero upgrade. Yeah, this is for the Voron Zero upgrade. And um, Cookie Cat is sending me a couple more spools of... Uh, the Unicorn and Dark Magic for the 0 0.2 build, the Cookie Cad 0 0.2 build. And I'm gonna print those, print these for that too. So, yeah. So, just little 15, 15 frame braces go at the front of the frame on the on the Voron Zero. Like, yeah. Not the right machine with this color scheme, but yeah. There we go. That's what they're supposed to do. So, will they really help stiffen up the frame? Or are they just for looks? Don't know. We'll find out. I know Albert runs something like this on his like super fast um, machine, like a frame brace kind of design like this, but I stylized mine a little more to match the ones that I made for the Ender 5s. Uh, so, yep, I just shrunk them down and made them fit for 15-15 extrusions. Um, I'll release these once I test them. Uh, I just want to make sure that there's no like bed interference issues. I designed them so there shouldn't be, but I want to be 100% certain before I release the design, so. I've never done the before and after input shaper setup uh, to test how well those braces actually perform. I haven't done it. Um, I want to, I'm probably gonna do it with the Trident because I printed some for the Trident, but I haven't installed them yet. So I think I'm probably going to do a before and after on that, just to see. So, yeah. Probably do a before and after there. Okay, we got a couple of sleeving covers here. I don't know where they are, but we have them. I know we have them. A couple pieces of sleeving that go over these. When are you working on the 0 0.2 again? I don't 100% know. Maybe Sunday? Maybe? Um, tomorrow? Either Saturday or Sunday. Undecided. Uh, yeah. Depends if, if Ruby's working or not on Sunday, really. Uh, 
because right now she doesn't have an appointment on Sunday, so if she doesn't have an appointment, I should spend some time with my wife. Where can I join the Discord? I don't have a Discord. Uh, I It's one of the things I've been kicking around doing, but I don't have one right now, Henry. Damn it, I can't find him. I'm looking for this stuff. This braided stuff. But this isn't it. I think this is from the LDO Trident kit, not not for this. Never use Discord, what's the benefit? Kind of like Discord can be like this. It could be a it, it it's nice when it's like a chat like this. Just hanging out, throwing out like, oh, check out the latest like new 3D printer part or something like that. Like it's it's a good way to just like people to just like chit chat about a hobby. It's not for everybody. Honestly, to me, part of the reason that I, I'm not huge on Discord is um, it just reminds me of like Yahoo mess, uh, Yahoo chat rooms from back in the day and AOL chat rooms and stuff. It's like our early 2000s time in the chat rooms. So I'm like, I already did my time, you know. Uh, once you get the ability for channel members, I can set up channel members now. I just have to set them up. Um, would You would use it for live notifications. That's a good call. That's a good call. So I should really consider that. I don't know what I did with the freaking sleeves. I know I had them. I had the cable sleeving for this project. I know I did. This is the fan filter for this. It's nice because you can get help, talk to other people, and it is good for like help, like getting support quickly, especially. You know, you post in a forum, you never know who's going to see it. A chat on a good active uh, Discord, you'll have an answer quick. Whether it's the right answer or not, who knows, but you'll have an answer. Um, buh, buh, buh. Damn it! I, I don't need the sleeving to get this done. I just wish I had it. So I'm going to skip it for now. Biney, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, my watch thought I was talking to her. It, whatever. All right, I'm going to sleeve those later whenever the hell I find them. All right, we are close. Now it's time to put the air filter in, I think. I'll get this out of the way. We can put the air filter into the chamber, and then we can put this in. That's really it. And I think uh, doors then, too. Air filter and doors. Doors are easy, though. That's not a big deal. All right. Mark four out of the way again. And get the enclosure back up here. Reddit can be the worst when helping people, yeah. I try to avoid Reddit personally. I usually head to Discord before Reddit. Uh, RH3D has a build log section on his Discord for E3NG. That's a solid call. Used to use Reddit a lot, but it got toxic fast, yeah. Oh, hey. I found the cable sleeving. It's inside the enclosure. <laughs> I'll worry about that when we put the machine in. All right, I need to mount that power supply. The power supply for the uh, lights and filter has a mount that I printed already. Just gotta put it on. I uh, joined the E3NG for, uh, Discord to figure out the firmware. That's a good call. It's a good use for Discord, stuff like that. 
I mean, I use the Voron Discord when I'm having trouble with like Clipper or like specific Voron stuff where I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. What am I missing? Or I've run into this really obscure can issue or whatever. What's, you know, that can be really helpful for that. Okay. Here's this mount for the power supply, for this power supply. Do I have to feed the cable through this or does it go this way? Let me. People downvote you helping because they think drying filament is the universal answer. Yeah. See, my biggest problem with uh, with Reddit is Reddit despises, despises self-promotion. Uh, you cannot self-promote on on Reddit. Like, they, they'll burn you at the stake. And I'm a content creator. I have to self-promote. It's my job, you know? So I'm just like, even if... I, I know I've talked to, like, ModBot about this before. He was like, oh, yeah, I've made a video on a topic. And, like, somebody asks a question on Reddit, and they're like hey, how do I fix this? And he's like, oh, I made an entire video about that. Here it is. And they'll like kick you out of a group. I think Uncle Jesse had that happen recently. He got kicked out of like one of the biggest 3D printing reddits because somebody asked a question and he had done a video on their question. So he's like, oh, here's, here's my video about this exact topic. And they banned him because of self-promotion. He's like, I made a video that answered your question. Like, what? <laughs> You want me to like, you know, type it out instead? I'm sorry. You always have to refer to someone else, but not your own. Yeah, I've legitimately had marketing companies. Um, I've had legitimate marketing, like professional marketing companies tell me that they run numerous Reddit accounts just to promote brands they work with because the brands can't post, but some random person can post about the product. And it's like, they have to lie and it's kind of not cool, but they have to do it. And they, they've told me, oh yeah, you should make a burner Reddit account just to do like promote yourself effectively. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I just don't. Uh, all right, I'm looking for assembly manuals. No, enclosure. Yeah, like I totally, it's it's that double-edged sword. Like I fully understand where it comes from. I totally get not wanting people to just be like, because legit early on, 3D print creator, hello. Um, like, yeah, I, I signed up for Reddit probably originally so I could post about my videos and be like, hey, I'm promoting my work. And then I quickly learned that's not a thing you do on Reddit. Um, so like, I get it. You don't want me flooding with, with my stuff. I totally get it. I do. But it's like, also sometimes it just really makes sense for me to post about a video I made or about a topic and it would really help. And eh. Someone recently got banned even though they, the pic they posted was of someone else's model. It has gotten ridiculous. When he asked for clarification, the mod muted him. <laughs> Lovely. Alright. Uh, ba ba ba. Installing this filter. How does this mount go? Oh, okay. This mount goes on the back there, actually. It goes back here with right underneath the power supply. Okay. That makes a little more sense now. I need to pull some more slack back. I got banned for Reddit because I used, uh, I used the YouTube function to post on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this, I think this goes into here. Yeah, this goes into here. Tight fit. Oh, this won't fit in here with the screw without it being screwed in. Damn it. All right, I can't screw it in once the it's in, I think. Can I? How does this mount? 
I lost my mouse. Multiple monitors. It's so easy to lose my mouse. I'm going to pull up the instructions so you folks can see what I'm looking at. Uh, okay, so it's external power supply. i got to slide an M3 square nut in here. Off to bed. Thank you for stopping by, Tom. Thank you for being an active member of chat. It's appreciated. Nothing worse than a stream when I just end up talking to myself the entire time. Might be entertaining for somebody when I lose my mind, but hey. Uh, whether or not a Reddit is good or bad really seems to depend on the mods. Totally. Makes sense. I, and I get that. Like, there's bad apples and everything. Like, it's just a thing. I've just never connected with Reddit. It's what, the way it works out. I just It's never been for me. After my time, I guess. Ugh. How would I push this in here? It's too tight of a fit. I can't get it back out. I need to get it out so I can put a freaking screw in it. Damn it. Oh, this is a tight fit. I, you know, I've got two of these. I think I might break this one just to get it out of here. Might have to. Essentially, 3D printing Reddit is just people asking who can't search asking the same question over and over. That's fair. What socials am I on? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. Twitter is where I'm most active as like a regular social, I guess, at this point. Which is silly. But, yeah. I didn't use Twitter until kind of recently, honestly. I never got into Twitter as well. I kind of lumped it in the same category as Reddit for me. Oh, I've got to break this. this. I can't get this power supply out of here. I put it in too soon. Scratch the enclosure. <laughs> um, and such a tight design. X. No, I refuse to say X. Bamboo subreddit is even worse, so oh, joy. Yeah, that's how it goes. People newer to something have newbie questions. It's gonna happen. All right, I gotta shave out some of the crappy print of, off of this one. The hardest is formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> This has some curling issues on this print, so. It's Twitter and it'll always be Twitter, yep. Twitter's awful now, yeah, it is pretty. It's a lot of bots, a lot of bots now. That's the problem, is I, I started using Twitter when it started to go downhill, unfortunately. But I still I still find it quite useful for 3D printing stuff and talking with brands and such. I've got, I've, I've met, I've worked with, met brands through it surprisingly regularly for how few followers I have. Like I've had brands reach out through Twitter that I've never talked to otherwise. So. Should say free speech rocks. Yeah. If that was actually true on Twitter, that'd be a thing, but it's not, but it's not. What was that Don Lemon got the uh, contract to to be a reporter and do reporting on Twitter until he asked Elon any hard questions and suddenly that contract got canceled because you know free speech and all that. Ah. Oh God, that's got to push way the hell down in there. Got to put an M M3 square nut in here, way deep. Yeah, hex wrench to push it down there far enough. Ow. Oh. This is not the greatest design.
Same ones who complain about cancel culture sure are quick to cancel. Yeah, they are. Kind of is a thing, isn't it? It's like uh, people who claim that people get triggered. People who claim that others are getting triggered by things sure do seem to get triggered by things a lot. Starbucks holiday cups and not saying Merry Christmas and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, now I've got this. Now I've got this. Okay, now this power supply goes in here. How does this work? I did this already. I'm not worried about the filter right now. Where does this mount go? Should probably talk, yes. Uh, Th that's fair. We should not get off on these topics. That is very fair. Uh, M3 by 8. Do I need that out of the way? I don't think so. Okay. What would you folks like to see me build that I haven't built yet? There's a good question. What printer, etc., would you like to see me build that I haven't built? No, Jack, it's okay. Do not, don't apologize. I, I don't want, same thing as, a, same thing with like the vegan thing. Like everybody's entitled to their opinions, their feelings, their beliefs, etc. I, I don't want this to be a, a, a playground for bad, whatever conversations, but uh, you know. A VZ bot for me, Black Box, Micron Plus, Annex K3, E3NG, but using a Neptune 3 Max. I would love to build a big Core XY out of something like a Neptune 3 Max or 4 Max, like convert one of those into Core XY. Big project. The, the hardest part about that is that the extrusions are like those capped off kind that don't... Um, don't build a Milo, an ender wire, or a switch wire. I'm not building an ender wire or a switch wire. I am building a Milo. I need to have a mill in my life. I need a mill. As a former fabricator, I need a mill in my life. Love to see you build a Fenrir Core XY when I finish the design. I've, you know, I've, I've seen some of your progress, I'm pretty sure. So definitely curious. Convert the orange Giga to a switch wire. <laughs> Uh, another Voron, but one meter long Z. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Seems excessive. That seems excessive. Have you done a Rook? Haven't done a Rook? Uh, proper, I watched, uh, I watched Jan's video earlier. I watched the proper video this morning. Uh, I like Milo. It's just how many builds. Do, I, I do get that. I, I wish I would have gotten one sooner. So I was. it wasn't like, oh, another one. Yay. I'm, I want to try and get Daniel, Modbot, and I to do like joint streams to try and make it a little more interesting. So like not only can he and I chat, but all of us can chat maybe. I don't know. Something to make it different. Um... I do get that though. I was I was kind of concerned about that when I was like, oh, I'm gonna build a Milo after Steve and Nero have done theirs and 3DP and me and yeah, so. But yeah, I think uh, the joint one would be fun, like like Steve and uh, and Daniel did with the uh, VZ bots. Henry, gotta head out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Ah, damn it. All right. Uh, Grant, uh, Nero and Grant just did a chat stream. I did that with uh, Jonathan, like uh, the next layer on his podcast, and it was fun. Uh, just like a chat. Like we do that stuff at shows. You folks just don't get to see it. Um, so that would be fun to do something like we I was thinking about that. I don't know if the internet's going to be good enough at Rocky Mountain to do some streaming from there. I might like to do that, like get Nero and Steve or somebody and just hang out and like have a chat with you folks who can't, whoever, you know, can't attend Rocky Mountain can see that. 
I thought about that. We'll see. I don't know if the internet's going to be good enough there or not. Oh, Ruby's calling. Hi, B. Oh, hi. Are you uh, done crispy cooked co uh, cracker? Okay. Uh, I'm streaming right now, working on enclosure, but I will, I'll wrap up soon and head over. Okay. Who? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm good. So. Okay. I will, uh, I'll let you know when I'm heading over. Ruby's done work. I had hoped to be done by now. You would absolutely watch that stream since you can't make it. I'm sure Nero will do like a walk and talk stream. He likes doing that at shows. I would imagine he will. This is not wanting to start. It's really hard to reach all the way around this thing and try to get the screw started into one little hole in this damn mount. IDEX Trident, or I really want to do something multi-tool. I do want to do something multi-tool, either IDEX or Tool Changer. Oh my God, why is this not starting? It's like going in the hole but not hitting the threads. There we go. There we go. That was annoying, but it's there. Okay, I know I missed some chat while I was on the phone with Ruby real quick. Can't really not answer when the wife calls. Conversions are always more helpful than kit builds. Interesting. Dueling zero, but big. Well, that's a dueling zero, but big would basically be a Tridex, wouldn't it? Is Dueling Zero... Dueling Zero, I know it's part of the Printer for Ants project, but is that like a multi Z-axis lead screw? It's basically Tridex. Bardicus, see you released your STLs. Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, you can get them on Thangs now. Feel like an enclosure it's not actually attached to the printer shouldn't be this involved to build. I mean, it's really not that hard or bad. I could have saved myself some trouble if I would have maybe looked at the instructions better. I probably shouldn't have put the side panels on before I like mounted this stuff. Um, part of it is also chatting. Like it's, this stuff takes so much longer talking to you folks because like if I just put my head down and did this project, I would have been done it in the like three hours the first stream took, you know? So that's the thing. Uh, dueling zero is uh, called dueling X. It's in the door, uh, but big is called dueling X. Okay, I'll have to look at it in the Doom Cube then. Jose, you gotta head out. Thank you for being here. It is appreciated. Thank you for being here. They're opposed. Uh, so like they're slightly different or they're they're different enough that they're opposites of sorts uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay external power supply is mounted now. It's time for the fan uh, Enclosure setup Gonna build a Phoenix after release. It depends if I get a bigger studio. I need a bigger studio before I can consider that Do I prefer putting my head down and getting projects done, or do I like the chatting aspect of stream? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I would have told you it's like putting my, I, I would have said, oh, right, they face each other. Right, right, they face toward each other. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yep. Um, a few weeks ago, I would have said I like putting my head down and just getting stuff done. Lately, these streams have been so excellent, and I, I'm not like blowing smoke, like, thank you, folks. The reception to my streams, getting going and starting and rolling and all this has been so solid and excellent conversations and giving me new ideas for stuff I can do or cover or new videos. And like, 
it's growing on me a lot. Um, it, I used to really have to force streaming and this is starting to feel really natural and I appreciate that. So yeah. Okay. I need the, yep. You're there. Stand off and such for this. Your streams are solid. It's worth being here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so we got a handful of like isolators, rubber isolators for the fan mounting. I take the filter part. Here's the filter housing with a little charcoal replaceable filter. Learn something on every stream. Awesome. That's one of the things that's nice about a stream is it can be collaborative. Like when I run into an issue with a build or whatever, often there's somebody in the chat who's like, oh yeah, I've had that problem. Here's the fix for it. Uh, or her, here's a fix for it. Or like the like the people who designed the project will be in the chat. Like, uh, you know, the Trident, working on a Trident build with the stealth skirts. The designer of the stealth skirts was in the chat while I was working on that. So it, was able to be like, oh, hey, here's the thing I don't like about this. Could you please update that? And then he turned around and updated it. And like, that's just stuff that won't, that is harder to make happen with videos. That collaborative experience. All right. M3 by eight screws go into here, into the isolators. M3 by eight screw. And then, but then saying that like this, this is taking a little longer than I hoped it would. So probably tomorrow morning, I'm going to finish this build off stream. Uh, Cause I got to go pick up Ruby real soon. Um, So I'll probably finish this off stream for here just to get this done. I don't want to stream this a third time. Um, I want this done. I want I want to be able to be using the Mark IV more. So, you know, I'll put my head down and get this finished. But it's been a fun experience to this point. Uh, you like that I'm just like you, don't have an aura that I'm better than folks. Plus we have the same hairdo. <laughs> I'm not better than anybody. Like, I'm sure there are things that I know and can do better than some folks, and there's things that you folks can do better than me. Like, I'm just a dude making stuff and having fun. And I have a job that is, like, excellent, and I love it, and I'm privileged to have it. But that's it. It's just, I'm just lucky. Not that I haven't worked hard for it, but, you know, whatever. Okay, two more on the side here. And not that I'm setting the world on fire. <laughs> it's still a struggle of a job, but, you know. Figuring it out. Pretending we know what we're doing. Pretending we know what we're doing. Okay. All these little rubber standoff isolators here go in here. There's that. I definitely need to get a close up angle set up here for you folks. We'll work on that for the next stream for sure. Repeat the same procedure, blah, blah, blah. O-ring goes in this face. There's an O-ring seal. That's a great thing. It's a lot of, a lot of designs don't seal very practically. Um, have I tried designing in supports in my parts? I find it works incredibly well. I agree. There are a handful of designs I've been playing with lately. Um, Antstar, thank you for being here. Um, have yourself a good one. Good night. Um, I agree. There's a, um, uh, a handful of designs that starting to use inbuilt supports, like supports built into the design and they work really, really well. I haven't really played with that in my designs. I've tried it one or two times, but nothing I've released. 
Um, and I've had mixed results. I've got to play with it a lot more to like learn it. Part of the problem is that like each each time I see it in other people's designs, it's implemented in different ways. So like I'm having trouble learning a way that works for my work. I personally design first and foremost with um, uh, trying to be support free. My goal is always for my designs to be support free if at all possible. So that kind of, it, it's like, when I set out to be support free and then I hit a point where I'm like, oh yeah, I need supports. I, I You kind of have to start out with that in mind, I feel like. And I need to work on that a little bit. So, no, haven't really played with that. Okay, this wire goes up toward this corner. Uh, it's great for angled stuff. It suffers from sidestepping. I mean, it's, it's good for... I've seen a lot of really solid implementations of it. I need to play with it more. Have you tried Beacon or Cartographer probes? Debating on the probe for upcoming build. Like feedback. I haven't tried it yet. I've got a, I've got two Beacons and a Cartographer here. Um, I've got two of them. And I haven't uh, used either one yet. I've got two Beacons and a Cartographer. I haven't used any of them yet. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. The Trident is getting a Beacon. Trident's getting an official beacon. My next 2.4 build, build is getting an official beacon. Ah. Um, care to give one up? No, they're all spoken for. Sorry. Um, and then Cartographer will probably end up on my Mercury 1, I think. Since it's not enclosed. That's the, most, that's the biggest thing I've heard from people, is if you're running a higher temperature or enclosed machine... Um, um, cartographer may suffer. Slant 3D did a, a post about printing boxes that helped me a lot. I haven't watched that yet, but I saw the I saw like the thumbnail of it, and that's like thinking outside of the box in your designs can really get you a long way without needing support. All right, I like that. This is a really great idea. They they have an actual O-ring inside of here sealing this fan to here so that the air it draws through will be drawn through um, through the filter. Uh, Beacon and Cartographer are cool, but the BD sensor has direct bed probing for Z offset. Um, that's the, one of my problems, is I really like auto Z calibration. Like, I have it running on my, uh, my 2.4 is running auto Z calibration. My Mercury 1 is running auto Z calibration right now with clicky probe, where it, it probes off the end stop. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and I'm not looking forward to giving that up. Uh, sometimes you have to work around issues, but it's always better to design for FDM and not the other way around. Yeah, I always try to, um, I always try to, to design, um, with FDM in mind, personally. I'm kind of anal about that really. Uh, do you ever need to adjust the Z auto Z offset? Uh, sometimes, rarely. Sometimes I might need a baby step still, but I mean, it's like, it's usually like 0 0.01, like very minimal baby stepping to get it where I want it. And more often than not, I think the problem comes down to my switches like my end stop switches are maybe just a little bit sticky or a little eh. Uh, and I think those are the bigger issue. BD is basically a Beacon Carto clone. I haven't heard of it. But has bed probing due to tool head flex. Weird. Okay, so this filter goes in here. 
just sits into here. Okay, straightforward. That's it. It's a neat filter system. I'm kind of amazed that it uses a 120 millimeter uh, blower fan. It's a heck of a static pressure fan for this situation. All right, so this installs in this corner. Which corner does it install in? Then the inside, attach it to the top right corner area. Okay, so the right rear. Put in one too many rivets back here. Now this goes in that back corner. I'm in a glass box of emotion. Come on. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Oh, now I use these thumb screws. Ha ha, that's what the thumb screws are for. Got it, I gotta lower this down so I can reach. Uh, do you think mainstream printer companies will ever incorporate eddy current leveling? Totally, it'll happen. It will happen. Finally caught a stream while it's live. Dodge Charger 440, welcome. Watched all the replays last week, rad. Or this week. Welcome to the stream. It's not gonna be much longer, but thank you for being here. Happy with my BL touch. Hey, if it works for you, it works for you. Honestly, as much as anything, I just play with, you know, I just play with whatever's new for the heck of it. You know, I like to be informed. I like to learn. And like, you know, I'm, I don't really want to run Beacon. I don't really care about super fast bed leveling. Um, I just want to play with it and try it out. And see what I think about it. And only one way to do that. Yeah, this is so annoying. This is definitely a uh, questionable design choice on on Prusa's point part here. You got it, four screw holes you got to line up just right with these little rubber standoffs that can give and move. It's kind of my job to try and learn new things. Totally is. You're right. And I love that fact. <laughs> I definitely set myself up uh, to do what I want to do. Try new shit. I find Z offset and bed meshing are highly overrated. Once you set up your printer, there isn't need for meshing before every bloody print. You're, if you have a well set up printer, you're not wrong. You know, it's compensation. You are compensating for, you know, inconsistencies and variables and whatever. And, and that's totally true. If your stuff is like dialed in, nailed, dead set, shouldn't really need that every single time. You're right. And there's a lot of companies that don't, you know, don't bed mesh before every print. Like the, the Magneto X. Uh, the Magneto X is not set up to bed mesh. They don't have it calibrated to bed mesh before uh, every print. So. Ugh. This is so fucking annoying. There we go. Now I've got to hold this in position and grab a nut. 
It just happened to slip in. I literally got mad at it, bumped it. Do I have any idea where I got the Hex Stealth Burn Shroud? I made it. I haven't released the design. There are ones out there, but I haven't released my design. So, uh, Fuzzy Tomato Head. I'm going to try and make a video about that this weekend. Now that you've given me that idea, I'm going to try and make a video about that this weekend, and I will release my version of that when I do. Sound like a plan? No problem. It'll be on this channel, uh, Mandic Labs. So it'll be on this channel. Th those kind of like super quick technical things I want to start doing more uh, here on Mandic Labs. Uh, not Mandic really. So, all right. The filter is in place. That was super annoying to get it in there, but it's in there. All right. And with that, I've got to go pick up my wife. I'm constantly changing things, so I find bed meshing helpful for that. Yeah. Uh, that's I, uh, very fair. I'm also messing with things consistently, continually, so yeah. Alright folks, thank you so much for being here. It's been a lovely chat, a lovely stream. I appreciate you folks and I appreciate the interaction and the hanging out and all of that. If you're not already, please do subscribe to the Mandic Labs channel. This is where we stream, hang out, chill out, and going to be doing more technical videos in the future. And uh, drop the stream a like so others can help, or you can help others find it, and maybe refer your friends. So thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Also, super, super big thank you to everybody who super chatted uh, this stream. I really appreciate that. It really helps out and helps to justify continuing to do this. I will be setting up memberships. Don't have them set up yet. Next couple of days, I'll try and make time to get to that. So thank you, folks. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,